So at 6 o'clock, I'd like to start the meeting, the January 28th, 2019 meeting of the Woodbury Select Board. Um, any adjustments to the agenda? I have one adjustment. Um, last meeting, I talked about the uh, Kingsbury Branch Technical Basin Plan and, yes. a, and a grant for the design, full design of the five priority sites. I have a letter of support. Um, send it out to you guys, um, but I have one if, you know, um, for us to sign if you can so much, so. Is the, um, Mike? Do you want this? Oh, I got one. Oh, you do? Okay. So, and that's my only. Okay, there are a couple of members of the public here I'd like to acknowledge. There's Jeremy Hansen from Central Vermont Fire to do a presentation tonight to we underserved individuals in the town of Woodbury, and Michael Leski from the Harbor Casino. Any comments, or? No. All right, next on the agenda is to approve the bills to the town. I'd like to introduce a motion that we approve the bills to the town. I'll second. Any discussion? <laughs> no. They were a lot smaller stacks. Yeah, this it was week. nice. Nice small pile. <laughs> <clears throat> All in favor then? Aye. Motion pals. And <coughs> next up is approve the minutes from the previous select board, and it should be meetings. Yes, we have three three meetings. Um, January 9th, a uh, special select board meeting uh, where we work pretty exclusively on the budget. The January 14th um, kind of general meeting, I'll call it. Um, and then a special meeting again to review the budget on January 23rd. I've read them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they seemed fine to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Michael, do you want to introduce that motion? Sure. I would make a motion that we approve um, the select board meeting minutes for January 14th and the special select board meeting minutes for January 9th and January 23rd. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Okay. <coughs> I'll start signing. Smart. <coughs> Sorry, we don't have any way to display your stuff. It's all, it's all good. <laughs> I, I have it in my brain. I can show it on my computer if necessary. Okay. You know, it would be nice um, at some point in the future because this comes up more and more. If there was some way, whether we could just use that monitor or if we had a monitor. Or some way that we could I plug into that monitor if necessary. Uh -huh. Okay. But well, yeah, we have plenty of monitors downstairs. Yeah, we have a bunch downstairs too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. We should be able to do that. We have the technology. Yeah. We have yeah. the lines. Yeah. Big monitor on the wall, like they got up to school. Uh, well, then we need. Yeah, we could there. do. Well, they have a bigger budget than we do. They, so do. <laughs> they have a they have a digital projector too. So, yeah. oh, you mean in our building up there? In the yeah. library building, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, in the front. I don't know if they paid for it though. Maybe it was a school. Or... Sure, okay, so um, I think I'll, I'll give you an overview of what um, CV Fiber is. Um, CV Fiber is a municipality. Um, it's a municipality made up of other municipalities. It's not unlike a, um, I don't know, like a sewer district or a water district or like an internet district. So it's a communications union district. Right now it's comprised of 16 towns, including towns that border you, Elmore, Cabot, and Callis in addition to several other, um, mostly Washington County towns, but also Orange and Williamstown. Um, the purpose, um, its purpose is to bring high-speed internet, real, true 21st century high-speed internet to, uh, at first, the underserved uh, folks in the community, and then eventually everyone. So in our mission to all residences, commercial entities, and civic institutions. Um, we are following the... Can I just... Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, is it high-speed internet as defined by the FCC? 
or is it high speed internet like uh, gigabit speed or something like that? So uh, that's a good question. I, I should also probably um, give a little background on myself. I'm a computer science professor at Norwich University. I teach networking and computer security among other things too. I'm on the Berlin Select Board. This, this originally came out of um, a lot of feedback I was getting from folks in town and my own dissatisfaction with the internet speeds that are there. I was getting satisfactory internet speeds according to the FCC. Sure. Um, but I'm a computer scientist. I use my computer a lot. A lot of my lectures I upload to the internet. If I record a video at home or if I want to live stream, it is ab absolutely, utterly impossible for me to do so because my DSL connection, which is the only option that I had in the two different places I've lived in Berlin, uh, are utterly inappropriate for that sort of application. Um, and I think there's only roughly 60% of people in Berlin, I could look up the numbers for Woodbury, it's much smaller, 60% of people in Berlin that, that have access to a cable modem or better. Um, so um, what we are talking about, so more concretely, is bringing fiber to the premises. So premises, not to the curb. Gigabit speeds, fiber to the premises. We are following the model of EC Fiber, which is a 24-town communications union district which abuts us to the south. So um, they're building out, for example, they're building out Brookfield end-to-end -end this year. And Brookfield is probably similar in size and density, I think, to, to Woodbury. Um, but they are, so if you want to sign up for gigabit fiber in Woodbury, you can do that. I think they charge 150 a month. Most people probably don't go for that, that top tier service, um, but the lowest tier service is 25 downloads, so 25 megabits per second from the internet to you, and 25 megabits per second from you to the internet. If you're a content producer, that speed going from you to the internet, the upload speed is extremely important, and with a DSL connection, I, I, at home I get maybe one or one half. With the cable modem connection you get three or five, maybe a little bit more than that. I have Comcast and I have business class with Comcast and my upload speed is only about 8 or 9. Mm -hmm. So that's probably about double my top download speed where I am yeah. in Berlin. <clears throat> download speed is about 70 gigs. 70 megs, yeah. yeah. Sorry. 70 gigs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to be I'll here. Be <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're all just going to connect to your house. <laughs> So um, we are a municipal entity. Um, however, we don't have um, we don't essentially have any financial um, connections to the, un to the underlying municipalities that we serve. Um, the towns don't take on any of any of the, its debt. Don't take on any of its obligations. And similarly, the towns don't own the infrastructure that we would eventually be building out. Um, we would we as the municipality would own it. Um, we or uh, we may run it as an internet service provider. We may contract out with other folks to do the various bits and pieces of that. Um, we're still working on what that model, what that model is, and exactly where we're going to build out first. Uh, we have it in our um, district budget, uh, separate from the Berlin budget that I was talking about before. In our district budget, to do our first pilot project of about five to six miles of fiber somewhere in the district uh, by the end of this year, and start turning people on soon. So, um, district as in Woodbury? Woodbury's not in, a member of the Communications yet, Union okay. District. We can certainly talk about that tonight and what's, in, what's involved. Um, but yeah, but as, as it stands right now, there are the 16 member towns, sort of in a lot of them, in, most of them in Washington County, but there's sort of like a U <laughs> going around Woodbury at present. Do you do a marketing survey to see what your penetration rate might be? It's in the pipeline. I have, we have pretty good numbers from EC Fiber, what they expect to see in places that only have DSL coverage and cable coverage. I'm happy to share as much. I'm just curious how, yeah. how, how you finance yourself. You know? So that, the, the financing is easily the hardest part. There's, um, thankfully, there's some good motion coming out of the, um, the budget that the governor just proposed. Um, however, um, we... We, CV Fibers Act is uh, advocating for um, some changes into how that's um, how that funding is sort of being directed. The um, once we get sort of financially stable, three to five years, we are eligible, just like you are, to go to the municipal bond bank. We are a municipality, and we can get that re reasonably low interest rate loans mm -hmm. to do our infrastructure construction. Um, and then we, we would take out these bonds as revenue bonds. 
So it's essentially borrowing in anticipation of what the people pay per month towards, the, towards that internet service. But uh, yeah, that initial financing hurdle um, is challenging. And we're looking at a number of different options, including um, kind of this revolving loan fund idea from the state that's being, that's being talked about in the budget. And again, I'm, I'm hoping that we can sort of massage that in such a way that we can get started much quicker. Wasn't there an, an initiative a couple of years ago to build fiber out that was a grant program and the monies got spent without anything being built or hardly anything being built? So there's, there were a number of previous state-run or state-sponsored programs. I can talk about a couple of them. There was one called the Vermont Telecommunications Authority that built a whole bunch of what we call dark fiber. That is the infrastructure without it being used for anything. It's essentially like building sewer pipes but not connecting anything to it. And the idea there was that at some point somebody would want to use that to connect like the kingdom or there's a bunch down, also down in EC fiber territory. And so they build out all of this, this middle mile fiber, essentially just to get data from point A to point B. It's not intended to be used for fiber to the home, um, but can be piggybacked on for exactly that. We don't have any of that VTA dark fiber in Washington County or in this area. Um, there's, another, um, there's another fund called the Connectivity Fund, which is used to um, supplement existing internet service providers' efforts to serve people and is really earmarked for people who don't have service full stop. Not, I don't like the DSL service that I have or whatever. It's people who don't have anything at all. And that uses those FCC guidelines. And the, so the current budget, not to go too far into the, into the weeds, the current budget proposed by the governor envisions um, putting a rather lot of money, more money into that, even though it won't actually improve um, internet service for most of the rest of us. It's going to get a couple extra people who are, you know, far up sure. on the side of the ridge or on in places that just would, that don't normally make sense. The finances work out with the model that EC Fiber uses and that we are um, we're working through right now with roughly six, five or six subscribers per mile. Not passing five or six people, but five or six paying customers per mile of fiber that we run. Fiber costs, that, so the, the total cost that EC Fiber um, runs with and that other similar folks run with, um, one of our board members is doing a similar initiative up in uh, Craftsbury uh, with a private internet service provider called Kingdom Fiber. Mm -hmm. and, so, and that number per linear mile of, of fiber is roughly $30,000. So thirty thousand um, dollars buys you a mile. So ten, if you have ten miles of town road, and you can find six, 60 people for those ten miles of fiber that we're stringing, this this works. Um, one of the things written in statute about communications union districts is that towns may not use tax money to fund this effort. It's strictly out of line. There are other ways that towns can get. In, involved in part by becoming becoming a member. That's probably the, the main one. Um, but there are other um, there are other mechanisms whereby towns could. Um, I, I I don't want to say invest. That's the wrong word. But could partner with um, maybe more a targeted construction. If you wanted if you wanted service at the town office, for example, and you wanted a contract with us to hook you up, that's something that we could envision because you are paying us for a service. You're not like writing us a check out of the general fund. I think one of the reasons we asked you to come tonight is so that we could just discuss how Woodbury could become a member of um, <coughs> Woodbury is underserved, not only for <coughs> internet, but also for cellular, too. So, so this, um, this effort can help with that somewhat. Mm. Um, in particular, um, one of the most obvious ways that it can um, that it can help is with something called a Wi-Fi calling. Sure. If you've ever used that, I so use it in my home because I don't have cell service. I, I have cell service. Thankfully, I have cell, cell service in my house. As soon as I get to the bottom of my driveway, it's it's gone until I get farther up Route 12. Um, and that's not that's not uncommon. I'm sure it's fairly common around here too. So if you have a high speed internet connection like you do, this is wonderful. If you have a DSL connection. Hmm. 
it's it's sketchy at best. So, um, if this infrastructure was there, it would certainly be possible for people to have their cell phones piggyback on those connections and be able to make high quality calls um, right over that connection. I'm going to try to look up my stats on um, how much coverage Woodbury has, but while I'm sort of scanning through my scanning through my notes here. Um, the process for a town joining the district, at this point since we've already been created, the select board votes to apply for membership. Okay. That comes to, to my board. Uh, I, I chair those meetings and we then consider it. I would add you as an agenda item for our meeting, not next week, it would be the following, following week. We, do, we meet the second Tuesday of every month down in Berlin. Um, and you'd be welcome obviously to come and, you know, plead your case or whatever, and then we would say yes or no. Because we haven't built anything, there's not, um, it's sort of not that, I would say it's not that big of a deal, but it's a, a much easier decision than we've already started doing stuff. And the statute does provide for if a town comes in later, after we've already started making investments and doing the work, a town comes in later, they can be asked to essentially buy in. We're not at that spot. We have a question. Susan Martin just joined the meeting. And Susan, you were at once yeah, part yeah, of the public service I, board or department? I used to work for the Department of Public Service many years department. ago. Yeah. Um, and I was um, asking, I, I wouldn't like to know if you're actually like a reseller of cable services? No. no. Do you build your own or you, you, you how do you, how does that work? We would, we would hire somebody, I mean. Okay, like we, Eustace or something. We would hire Eustace yeah. to string the fiber along existing utility poles and then we would bring drops from the poles to mm -hmm. each individual residence or business. Are you willing to bring fiber to the cow in Woodbury? Uh, I, I, that's a reference I'm not, I'm not getting. Um, <laughs> if, if, we can, if we can hit six subscribers per mile, the answer is yeah. yes. Now, um, Comcast won't build out unless there's like uh, anywhere from 12 to 26 customers per mile. Every year you talk to them, it di it's different. Um, but so you have your own wires. We would build our own wires. Your own responsibility. Correct. And um, how difficult do you find that to be a renter on those poles that our electric company owns? They're um, required to give us access, right. and they're required to rent those to us. It's um, um, I've heard some that there are some challenges in terms of getting getting the poles made ready, mm -hmm. right? Make um, ready. Mm -hmm. And that so that make ready work can sometimes go slowly. Right. Um, but that's all part of the pole rule yep. in front of the public service board, Absolutely. and that has like uh, times and so. Are there any restrictions besides um, the finances? Um, are we allowed to tax you? I don't, I don't know. I mean, so we are a separate municipality. I mean, conceivably, you could write a charter. Mm -hmm. um, you could do, make a charter change, okay. send that to the legislature. I guess that could happen. But I mean, mm -hmm. um, property taxes, we're, would be, we're a municipality, a nonprofit. I don't think, mm -hmm. I mean, we could conceivably talk about a pilot maybe down the road, but that's right. not, uh, pro probably okay. not. Where do, you, where do you want to stop? We don't tax Comcast, nor, nor do we tax consolidated communications now for oh. their... Really? You could. You could. <clears throat> Equipment. I don't understand why the town does it. They in, have property that goes right through this town. In, in, in Berlin, we, we, act, we have a tax on um, equipment and inventory. I guess we never knew about the possibility no. of doing that. No. Never heard that it was a possibility. Okay. Um, you talked to the league about that. Huh. Take so basically you're overbuilding Comcast is what you're going to be doing. Um, at least initially, hopefully not overbuilding Comcast much. We're really going to look at targeting places that don't have... Right, so you're going to spider out to the rural roads that Comcast wouldn't go, go up to. Right, so of your 766 buildings in Woodbury, uh -huh. this data is slightly old, I have here that 348 of them, um, so 45%, get... Um, 25 megabits per second, which is which is Comcast. Is that is that federal? Because we no, this we've is from the PSD. With Corey Chase running around the. <laughs> well, that that's that's cell coverage. This is yeah. strictly internet okay. service. Okay, broadband. This isn't okay. this isn't wireless. Okay, what are, do you foresee uh, any future possibilities? Your company going cell phone 
wireless. It's it's possible. I mean, it's certainly within our within our, our, our realm of possibility. I mean, in, we're you know our structure is defined in statute, so it, it says what we can and can't do, and it doesn't say specifically what kind of um, infrastructure we we should use. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So it looks like there's roughly um, yeah there's there's yeah so. 45% of folks in Woodbury have cable or better. We'd be, at least initially, you know, wherever, wherever in the district, supposing you join the district, we'd be looking at that, at the remaining 55%. So the folks in the, in the outlying areas that are, where it's dense enough so it makes sense. Because we, ha we have, to, I mean, we still have to pay the bills at the end of the day, of course. Um, but we want to build in a place where people are reasonably going to, going to take the service. Uh, EC Fiber's experience is 30 to 35 percent in those areas. In, in areas where cable is built, you get 17, roughly. So there, it's kind of a different business model if you're if you are overbuilding in the places where Comcast is. Eric, would you like some water? No, I'm good. Thanks. Thanks. I had a similar project to this when I worked in the UK. We were building on fiber to the curb and giving the subscribers dial tone and cable TV. It was our first initiative over there. It was in 1991, 1992. And so there was doing exactly what you were doing, kind of overlaying BT's, uh, BT's footprint over there. And our penetration rate, our marketing folks said that anything over 10% is gravy. So that's how we built it out. One of, one of the things that, that got me sort of on, on this track is was it was it actually an, an initiative in the UK, a more modern initiative uh, called B4RN, Broadband for the Rural North, um, where they would essentially bring people in cooperatively. So you'd have them, because they're more <coughs> village oriented there, sure. and they would say, hey, Farmer X, you've got a trencher, right? To twitch, whatever. And they would draw a big circle around the town. And they would lay, they would have the, the people lay their own fiber, and then they would pull in spokes into the village. And they would they would build their own, and then they would string the next village along, in a series. And I looked at that. I was like, that sounds so Vermont. It does. <laughs> I was like, unfortunately, we're not nearly anymore as village centric, nor do we really have the ability to 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 do like trenching like that. Um, but then I looked, and I discovered what EC Fiber is doing. Obviously, a very very different model, but yeah, very very interesting. Now we have a section of town which is West Woodbury, mm -hmm. but you got to go through Hardwick to get to West Woodbury. So you, would you run your lines through Hardwick and down Presumably. 15 and... We're in the same boat in Elmore. There's a big chunk of, of northwestern Elmore yeah. where we'd have to swing, we'd have to swing outside of the district. Uh, EC Fiber actually has customers in one of our district towns down in Roxbury because mm -hmm. that was the only way they could get to some folks in the northwestern corner of um, Brookfield. So you could presumably pick up folks in Hardwick? It's, yeah, it's, we, only those that we would essentially go by incidentally. We don't have, essentially don't have the, the right, we don't have it kind of in our charter, our kind of statutory authority to serve people outside of that. Now if Hardwick said, you know what, Woodbury's on, us too. Okay. If, if they want to get on board, they should do it in the next few months. Because we're, uh, we've already applied for a grant, we have a bank account, and we're, I mean, we're going to be buying stuff and doing feasibility studies and surveys and stuff, lickety split. I don't know if Westwood has anything up there. Smoke, smoke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do they have any cable at all up that way? A couple of old drums. I, I have I, my map is, uh, this map I have is um, a year and a half old. If anything, they have DSO. But it's probably crummy DSO. No, I should ask Jack Travis because he, he uses his computer quite a bit. Huh? They, they, they have no, no cable up there. Right. Yeah, I can show you. So it's going to be through the air then? No, I'm, I'm sure it's just through the phone lines. So red is where there's cable, green are where there are, there are buildings, and the black would be where there's, there's DSL typically. This is probably route 14. Yeah. So this is West Woodbury, this is West Woodbury right here. Yeah. Yeah, so if anybody's got anything, they're getting it. Through a little this pedestal. Is where, this is where we're going to ah, that'd be kind of nice to 
the fact that you would go to that route to cover all of Woodbury instead of just you know, to the village or Green the Lake or whatever. Yeah, I mean, so, so keep in mind, you know, we are a public entity and we are, we are community service. Um, it's not something that we're doing for profit. Um, our, our mission is to serve everybody. And that's really, it's, and it's really important to a lot of the people on the board, all the representatives on the board, you know, are pushing towards this because they see the benefit of better internet service. I mean, you ask any economist, they're going to say adding this sort of infrastructure is a easy, I don't want, easy is the wrong word, is a clear economic development driver. Yeah. It's, it's, almost, it's almost unavoidable. So us as a, as a public entity, our job is to make this better for the, fo for the folks in the district. Could, could you kind of succinctly kind of describe the EC fiber as, I know it's a model for what you're doing, but I don't know if, if, you, if I mean, you explained it once at a meeting that I was mm -hmm. at, but it might be just how it's working for them. I mean, sure. you hinted at it a little bit, but just. I actually had a meeting where they, that they were in, that was last week. I have some stats I can share with you. Hold on. Um, they've been around for quite a while in various um, in kind of various forms, and they started sort of in fits and starts. Um, their funding model from the beginning was crowdfunding and some some weird ways of getting the money that really made the network that they built not ideal so much that they're actually having to go back now and fix things and overbuild their own white their own fiber um, EC fiber passes 28,000 premises in 24 towns um, uh, let's see and they're kind of south of the area that CV fiber is, is yes they serve um, it's like from Brookfield down to West Windsor over through um, oh my god so it's, it's almost like a, just a contiguous 24-town chunk from south of Roxbury and south of Williamstown and Orange down to like West Windsor and sort of over. I, I, can't, I couldn't name all of the. So Royalton is where their office is. Um, they have roughly 3,000 subscribers who, if you average out the cost or the, what they're paying per month over all of them, it's roughly $100 a month per subscriber. Um, they were, they became um, cash flow positive, what is it, EBI, I, I don't remember the accounting term, earnings before, all that stuff. They became cash flow positive about two years ago. Um, they continue to bond to build out more and bigger parts of their member towns. And they are getting to the point where they are almost done. Really? Done. <clears throat> Except in a handful of places where there's already very deep <laughs> penetration of much higher speed options. And then um, they're looking at what are the, um, what's the kind of alternative business model that they have to look at in order to go into those places. Because it's different than when you're going and building in a DSL place where you have, it's much less, much less dense. It's much cheaper to build on poles when there's only a power line and a phone line. Sure. Um, it's much cheaper than if you're building in Montpelier and you've got stuff underground. Mm -hmm. Or you have to build new poles because there's, you know, stuff on it or old poles mm -hmm. or things like that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's their, their, their model. Mm -hmm. um, and they have um, something like 13, 14 full-time employees um, in their office. They run their own... Um, they run their own help desk. They contract for construction, but they have their own like bucket trucks um, to work in the un under the electric space mm -hmm. on the poles. Uh, we've been having meetings. So speaking of the electric company, we've been having meetings with um, Washington Electric Co-op about how we can partner with them because mm -hmm. there's um, there's some good reasons why an electric uh, an electric utility would want better internet service to their right. to their members. Mm -hmm. Because there's all sorts of wonderful things, more in my field again, to that you can do with um, automation and responding to demand and uh, some some cool things that you can do to, to to mitigate electrical demand and SCADA stuff. Solar power. Do you guys staff your network, or do you plan on staffing the network operations center? 
Okay. So somehow, somewhere, we've, yeah. we've had talks in a couple of different places about what that would look like, and we haven't. We sort of haven't settled on that. That's kind of that's part of our feasibility study. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense to do that initially when we have our a really small pilot that we're going to have at the end of the year, or do we contract with somebody else to sure. to do that? And there's some there's some good I think there's some good options for us out there to do that. Um, I I would like to see us as something that looks more like EC Fiber, where we do have our own office, we do have our own employees essentially. Um, whether that's the reality or not, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm, I'm just the chair, I just get to herd the cats. But, but ultimately, each, each town has, has a representative and typically an alternate, and that each town gets a vote on the board. Sure. So, um, which is much more like old school Vermont, so Montpelier gets the same vote as Elmore, for example. Not like the Board of Education is voiced in on this. <clears throat> I'm just going to I live in Berlin. There's an active lawsuit there. So. We live in Woodbury, and there's an active something or other something going on here. <laughs> I got you. So how do we sign up? If uh, we if we agree that it's mm -hmm. a good thing for the town, I think it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. No financial cost to the town. You know, I think it's just. Could get a lot more people on that don't have the option right now of getting sure, on. Sure, definitely will. Yeah. I mean, it's a long-term thing. It's not going to happen tomorrow, but but um, you know, it's it's better to get started and start walking in that direction. It'll be part of the marketing survey. Yes. Yes. You know, we don't want to, you know, come in to the second round. And, and I want I want to restate again. So not only is there no financial commitment, there is indeed a statutory firewall between our obligations and your finances. So that's, that was a really important selling point as I was talking to select boards last year for the, essentially the, the first round of these. Um, you know, I, I'm not going to promise that we're going to be here next year or two years or whatever, mm -hmm. but it is our, it, written in our mission that we serve our member towns and people will get service, if I have anything to say about it anyways. Is there any sort of, oh, Susan? I'm sorry, how close are you to we don't have any any fiber out. We we just had our first board meeting last May. Okay, so basically you're you're new. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And you have. Um, do you do you carry the certificate of public good? We don't need a certificate of public good. Because you're in this, so you declared municipality. No, nope, no, because we don't have any any of the. We're not under any of those regulatory bodies. We don't provide phone service. We don't provide cable service. If we decide we want to provide right, those then those services, then th yeah. then we do, then we do. But we don't otherwise have to providing simply internet service. Okay. Right. And, and who's on your board of directors? From which town? Oh, you have different. Each different each town sends one board and at least one alternate. And how many towns are you in? Sixteen. Sixteen. But you're not related to EC Fiber. We are really good friends with EC Fiber, okay. and they provide us with constant information whenever we ask for it and advice. Have you, have you asked, you've asked Washington Electric, have you asked Hardwick to partner with you? I just haven't had that conversation yet. Right. Yeah. So uh, Hardwick Electric is not into much of our territory, but a bit of Elmore, maybe. Right. I don't think they get down into Worcester. They're, over, they're all over here. Yeah, most of Woodbury is hard to So we, w we would have that conversation, especially if you, if you joined. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. So um, your next steps would be making a motion to petition to join our communications union district. Um, I would probably want something like, like that in writing, um, which could be brought to our next meeting by one of you or by somebody. Mm -hmm. And then the next order of business, which could be done concurrently, would be to um, appoint a board member and or alternate uh, board member and one or more alternates mm -hmm. to that um, and then you can come sit down immediately on when would that be February 12th uh, at our next meeting at 6 p.m. Berlin Elementary School um, and so if essentially I would put put that at the beginning of the agenda if everybody said yes and my instinct is that they would um, if everybody says yes, then whoever your appointee would be would sit immediately and would be part of the discussion, voting, hearing, everything that's going on. If you are so inclined, ORCA has a recording of every single one of our meetings front to back, including many of our subcommittee meetings, which could be um, informative, especially for whomever um, draws that straw. 
for, well, I would volunteer to, do, <laughs> yeah, to, to draw that straw. Because <laughs> I used to do this. So. Good. Yeah. So how many years from now do you anticipate if Woodbury joins and the whole works before people in the town would start seeing the benefits of it? I hate to be a forecaster like that. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to give you sort of best case, worst case. How about yep. that? Best case, we identify that Woodbury is really the right place to start. And we start, we hook up a handful of people at the end of this year. I think that's really, really super optimistic. Yeah. But um, I wouldn't be doing this. I wouldn't have spearheaded this back in 2017 if I wasn't being optimistic. Because this, yeah, sure. this is hard work. This is, this is certainly uphill. Yeah. Um, when do I expect that we're going to get a wide swath? It depends a lot on funding. If we can get a good amount of funding either from the state or from some other mechanism, and there's some, I think there's some good options out there that I'm optimistic about again. <laughs> um, it's possible if we get good funding, we could be building a good portion of uh, member towns in three years? Yeah. 2021? That's good. So you're right at the beginning. Okay. Yes. Than the Comcast well, the Comcast <laughs> isn't going to do anything. No, they're not. Well, it's, yeah, it's, it's not in their business model. It's not right. really right. possible with what they're trying to do. Um, Plus, coax would be, you know, in the future, just phased out, you know, the all fiber. Because mm -hmm. you know, you're going to need more and more bandwidth to do the things that, you know, the digital natives want to do. Right. Uh, te telemedicine, yeah. any, of, any of your, you know, <clears throat> content creation. Um, and so, in, in a real way, you know, we're not looking at competing with the cable air, cabled areas, at least initially, but we're leapfrogging the folks in the DSL right quick. I'm sure. And so when the, when the folks who, are, who do have cable, who want that higher speed service, see that all of the folks in the outlying areas get that, um, you know, I think there's, there's, there's certainly going to be the motivation to do that. What, one of the things I hear from realtors is that people, people, one of the first things they ask, what's your internet service there? Yeah. It's like, oh, it's DSL. See you later. Adios. Yeah. And I've had, I've had people call me, they, they get my phone number from our webpage, and they say, do you serve this? I was like, I, well, I looked at the map, and I said, well, you got DSL there. They're like, oh. Well, the governor's initiative to give people who want to migrate right. to the state of Vermont $10,000 so that they can, you know, work from home, you know, and have the DSL, you know, essentially a dialogue. You know, on twisted copper, it's just ludicrous. You know, who would want to move, like you say? One of the first things we ask when we were looking for a home is, you know, what's the broadband speed at the house? It's like inviting someone to a buffet and there's not no food. <laughs> it's like it's all you can eat, though. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of water. Lots of water. Yeah. Yeah. Clear. I think about the lakes and ponds and all the camps on these lakes where the people come in for the summer and they would probably love to have. Sure. These services that they have at home. Yeah. People yeah. living out on Capit Road yeah. that you know have, um, want to have a home business. I had a, it's a just woman calling from sense. a communications company when I first came on the board. They were going to put up like mini towers all over, all around on Route 14, mm -hmm. so at least we could have uh, uh, cellular service. And up and down 14, right? Yeah, I remember right. that. Yeah. And. So I said, okay, what poles are you going to put them on? Because she wanted to assign a 911 address to each one of them, a locatable address. And uh, so I gave her the locatable addresses for them. Never heard from her again. Mm -hmm. I don't know if she was part of that BTOP grant that uh, was around three or four years ago. It wasn't that, Cloud Alliance. Yeah, I think it, it might have been. So <coughs> Cl Cloud Alliance offers wireless service. It's not cell, though. Okay. It's, yeah, it's not 3G, 4G. They offer uh, fixed, wireless. fixed wireless. So you, so you have, and it's, it's not super fast, but they, they serve a fair number of folks around here. And, and the guy that runs, that runs that company is on our board from Plainfield. Okay. Well, they were talking about up 14 for right. a car act. You could wreck your car at night or something. You've got cell service, you know, of different places that they were going to do that, but yeah. they never... Never panned out. Never panned out, no. Yeah. yeah. All right, I'm sold. Yeah, me too. Yeah, right. great idea. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, go ahead and make a motion. <laughs> so, is it a, we, pre, we petition you to become members? Yep. Yeah. You're, you're essentially just make, making making a request to join, um, you know, to join the communications union district known as it's technically Central Vermont Internet, but I mean, I'm going to know what you're talking about. And okay. I'd like to introduce a motion then that we. 
petition the Central Vermont Internet to become part of their municipal structure for Second. fiber optic broadband. Mm -hmm. Second? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Great. Do you want to make your appointment right away, too, so somebody can sit with us in uh, on 12th? I would nominate Skip as our... I don't know what. 12th? I'll second that. Yes, yeah, so if, uh, if you send me an email, um, I will loop you into uh, all of our communications. And but I wonder if Susan yeah. would want to be an alternate. Yeah. Susan, cool. where'd she go? Yeah. Quick, quick. Maybe with her background. Yeah. Yeah, I'm next to and the rest of our backgrounds being pretty damn busy all the time. <laughs> it's hard to take anything else on. <laughs> I hear you. I have to go home and post on the front porch forum about sand like I mentioned. <laughs> front porch forum. Everybody has one. Yep. Great. All right, so, so Susan Martin, so you're going to get someone from the Public Service Board and, and the telecommunications engineer. Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was... So shall fun. we make a motion for that too, or do, to what? appoint them? Do we, we, do we have that? to do that? Yeah. To appoint Susan? It's, it's, it's probably a good idea, okay. and as long as it, as it shows up in your minutes that you did that, okay. that's, yeah. that's sufficient for me. To, I mean, I, I asked the other towns and so, the cities that did so I that. I make a motion can't. to appoint myself. I'll make, I make the motion that we um, appoint Skip Lindsay as the representative to from Woodbury to Central Vermont Internet, and that we also appoint Susan Martin as from Woodbury. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Wow, you great. A, a tentative, but eager welcome. <laughs> and uh, got a whole Google Drive full of stuff for you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you just it's made his day. Just what you think it's safe. Anything else for me, guys? Pardon me? Anything else for me? Yeah, uh, thanks for coming. Questions. What's that? Thanks for coming. Yes, appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. It's a great opportunity for Woodbury. It really is. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. I'll see, see you on the twelfth. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. -bye. Yeah. 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 And I just, and so, you know, he had he had a PowerPoint there, of course, um, and Woodbury was surrounded by other towns that are a part of this. So it just, you know, it just sounds. Yeah, what I really like is the fact that you get to West Woodbury. Yeah, you know, so many people yes. stop you know, because you can't get there from here, but they will run the lines or I mean, it's going to take time. Yeah, but. And it sounds reasonable if you want, you know, depending upon the speed, if you want gigabit speed, it's going to cost you money, but yeah. seems like anything like yeah, Like I wonder what, what ben, Witt, ben Witt is doing up on the East Hill trying to run his business. I don't know. Yeah. If it's DSL, boy, right. yeah. I don't know if they have Comcast up in East Hill. I don't know. I've never heard anybody say yeah, that. Yeah, there up there or not. Sideways or Okay. All right. So next on the agenda is the uh, town treasurer's report. Do we have a treasurer? Takes you there somewhere. <laughs> she said she's still talking to us. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to say anything. I do have a few highway budget changes. Was your financial statements included in one of those? Yeah, where did they go? I saw that they didn't mine. They were disappearing in piles of paper. Mine's around here somewhere. I saw my name on it, it was written in red and everything, you know, but as usual. Might be that skipped. Well, let's see where did we go. You lose it already, Mike. I did. <laughs> oh, here it is, bottom of the pile. Okay, 
so here's the... All right, so where would you like to begin? The uh, financing for Financing the for the 2019 okay. Freightliner. Um, so the so the backstory of this is financing it through Dalmere, Chrysler Dalmere or Dalmere Benz. Mercedes Benz. Mercedes Benz. Mercedes -Benz. It would cost us more money than if we went with Union Bank. Mm -hmm. So that being said, Randy did some legwork and we're ready to sign the document so that we can move forward and the salesperson who sold us the truck back in October right. can actually get paid. Right. She's definitely anxious. To she, is. she is. I did speak to her on Friday explaining the situation and she's you know, fine, she understands totally. In fact, she mentioned to me she would like. She's very curious to know the differences in, in what we're, you know, interest and all, because there are other towns that have done the same thing recently. So she's, you know, definitely. So they're losing out on interest because they're charging too much. Well, no, they aren't. The, the no. dealer is the dealer is kind of the middle person. But she mentioned to me um, that um, there are other towns that have chosen not to go with Daimler Mercedes Benz and to, to finance it locally through local banks like like we're doing. So um, I don't know if you would be able to contact her. I spoke with her on Friday. I think I sent you an email about. Are you talking about Lori? Lori, yeah. yeah. Lori yep, Paul. I wrote to her today. Okay, good. Yep. Um, she she was kind of just curious to know yep. what the differences were. Yep, she we're going to be actually transferring the money electronically. Mm -hmm. Okay. To get it there faster, they both agreed. So this would be Rhonda. Uh, Union, Union Bank. Bank. <clears throat> it's sort of, so we're sort of getting even for being strong for a few months on when the truck was going to arrive. So this is our way of getting even sooner. <laughs> but I'm glad that we're finally. So what I'd like to do then is introduce a motion that we not only purchase the low pro 2019 low pro quote plow truck, but we finance it through uh, Union Bank. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. So we have to sign that. Is this five thousand seventy-five dollars and eleven cents of interest? Wow. By going with you again. Said it would have been like around thirty thousand. Did you say before with Daimler? Thirty thousand seven hundred twenty-eight dollars and thirty-seven cents. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. That's that's another reason why we should well, keep an eye on the hearth fund or whatever right. we want to call it, so we have a cushion that eventually we can just go out and pay cash. Right. That's, that's and save the town twenty-five thousand dollars. And I think for anything that we finance before we get there, let's go to our local bank first. Yeah. Yep. This is am that's an amazing not. difference. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Is this the one place where we sign? Oh no, there's many. There's many places. Yeah, okay. many. <laughs> so let me carefully go through this. And, and and they also agree that, that the first payment isn't due until October first, right. which is just yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you yeah. can't be done. Can't be done. <clears throat> so do you want to advise where like just where I sign, Michael? Mm -hmm. Just where you sign. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Yep, they're all noted where Okay. Right. Yep. This is um so, you know, I'm really glad that there was this kind of confusion with Daimler so that we looked in, you know, at your suggestion, looked into this. The hesitation of them wanting to, for us to provide more backup when we already have mm -hmm. two leases through them mm -hmm. kind of stumped me. And it may be just a new process that they're yeah. having to do, mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, they and they increased it, our interest oh, yeah. after the first quote was what got me. Yeah, and maybe the next time we could check not just them but merchants and credit union. We could start looking locally at some of these other institutions. What did we end up with for a percentage rate you know, of interest? 4.10. Daniel was five point something. No, there's four. That's not going to be five point 
24088. <laughs> so there are three places to sign them. Okay, just shop around. So I was stumped today. <clears throat> I don't like being stumped. We don't like it when you're stumped either because it costs us money or <laughs> something happens. <laughs> so I was provided. Oh, we're talking. The pay charts. The pay chart. Mm -hmm. yes. Correct. So you had sent me minutes mm -hmm. stating for Peter's. Yes. Should be three places, probably. Mm -hmm. I apologize, I should have tapped them for you. Front still? Nope, I think you have to keep digging. There's one like buried. So there's two pay charts. I don't, at some point, one was degraded. Right. And that is where the big oh no is. So the first degraded. one. Degraded. It has done. So, what does that mean? So this is the first original. It would be the one that's chart. now it's in the personnel off. policy. These are the pay starts. But if you look at these starts, there's already two in deep. You're already knocking one right off from here. Okay, so yeah. when I started him. That's an old one. This one is the old one. Yeah. Yes, this one is the current one. It's affected by that's, that's the one that's in the personnel right. policy. So by this one, yes. by increasing. <coughs> so they're both going to be at the same wage. At, at the moment, they would be, yes, and then when um, the new fiscal year starts, uh, Tim will get bumped up a step, but Peter wouldn't. Okay, yep. I just want to clarify that yep. before. Yeah. Okay. Because yep. we want to keep Tim. Because he has okay. yeah, a little more seniority. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Peter will go to that. Yeah. So they'll get a bump right away. Yep. Mm -hmm. I thought at the last meeting, though, you guys said that on July 1st, Peter would go up one, Tim would go up two to keep that separation. He was going to get the raise now, getting a CEO. I don't think, I don't think we said that. Because the whole step thing so, is yeah. incorrect. Even by saying step one, step two. Yeah, forget about that. Don't even look at yeah, that's an old one. Yeah. Yep, this is, that's the delete that from your okay. computer. <clears throat> so I had that. Uh, talking about where we adjusted everyone's wage. Mm -hmm. And that's right. I have that issue actually. Let's see. Okay, that's in there. Yep. Uh, that's it. This is an old one. This is. So it's. CDL, he'll get bumped to step two. Yep, that's what we. Yep. That's from our. Then they can consider bumping him to step three of the next beginning. fiscal year. Begin next Why? fiscal year. Yep. And I think what we meant by that was 21. Tim. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tim's on step two. And he'll go to step four, oh. 1695. Right. He goes, he, so he jumps a step. Yeah. Two to four. Yeah. So basically, so he goes, keeps the separation. Yeah. Peter's getting bumped up. So he will right. go up again mm -hmm. in the fiscal year to three because Timmy's going up to four. Right. That's why I think you guys did that. It says it right here. Then they can consider bumping him up to step three beginning the next fiscal year. Yeah, because we, we brought Peter in as entry level. Mm -hmm. and Based on his performance in CDL, we gave him another bump because he was. Yeah, so I have here Timothy Neal's step four um, for fiscal year 20. Correct. And I guess Peter's not even on this list yet. Mm -hmm. Oh, here, yeah, he's sort of written in at the end. So 
Yeah, I have written, actually somebody else wrote this, I think it might be, is that your writing, Skip? Let me see. Right here. Increased to 1650. So at the beginning of fiscal year 20, Peter would be bumped up to 1650. 1645. 45, and, and Tim Neal would be bumped up to 1695. So Peter would be at step three, Tim would be at step four. Will you be adding another part-time? No. no. In this chart? God, no. Why? No. Part-time is part-time. Okay. And they, they both they both have equal right. credentials. They both have, now they okay. both have so their Okay, so as of now, I am bumping Peter up to 1593. Mm -hmm. Step three. Step two. Okay, step two right away, yeah. yeah. Okay. And then step three. The step three, July 1st. Okay. So while we're on this conversation about um, Greg Parkhurst asked me to ask um, if the select board would consider paying Peter the three hours that he spent on Wednesday taking the road test. I don't, I don't see why not. Okay, all right. And then Tim Neal brought him there and back because yeah. Peter, so, so that's okay. Paid too, yeah. Okay. And then when we start Peter at the 1693 or whatever on 15, Thursday, 1593, yeah, at, on Thursday when he's because he was working on Thursday and technically he had a CDL license on Wednesday. If Brandy can do that, sure. So the checks today do not reflect that, right? Because it's easier just not to. Okay. Start on Monday. Okay. All right. That's fine. Fine by me as long as it's yeah. okay with, with you. With <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So as of Monday, he will be starting at okay. the fifteen ninety-three. All right. And Tim is at sixteen forty-five. Yes. Tim is currently at fifteen ninety-three right now. Yeah. So until the new fiscal year, yeah. until July first, so it'll go up to sixty. We'll go bump them up two steps. Right. Okay. Yeah. Just right. to keep that. Yeah. That's what that's we have written here. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. To keep that. Um, keep them. That difference. Yeah. Yeah, for the time. I was just so, yeah. slightly confused over so many papers. Okay. Yeah, get rid of that one. Yeah, get rid of it. Yeah, the title of this one is July 1st, 2018 through June 30th, 2019. So that's the one. And you can have, I have several copies here. Yeah, I've actually got a couple of them over here. <laughs> so you have a copy there. I will need yeah. it digitally. Oh, you want it digitally? Yeah. It's in the uh, personnel policy, page 23, just before appendix okay. 2. Did you reimburse the cost of the CDL already, or were you going to ask about that too? We already that was our today's check. Today's check. Yep. Um, okay. So that time will be a next week paycheck, and um, mm -hmm. If you're going to be talking to them, just have it right on their new right, time right on the timesheet for this. Yep. This week. Okay. Um, okay. Too many papers. Right. We could, we could do something electronically. Here. We, we should all have laptops. So town should buy each select board member a laptop. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> the list you can borrow the whiskers. Board should have their own office. <laughs> Well, we'll close the door, Diana. And <laughs> 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 Can I call the printer? Yeah, the printer died. Huh? No, I just fixed it. Uh -huh. You fixed it? I will send you my bill. <laughs> you should. Yeah. How did you fix it? Did you I Googled in it. I Googled the code, oh, and wow. I fixed it. I cleaned oh. the waste, toner waste, and yeah. Well, uh, good. That's a so. good job. Yeah. So, Ryan, did you sign a great check? Sure. <laughs> yeah, I have shared a copy that works. How many places did you sign? Did you sign three? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, I will have you date that. Date it today? Uh, yes, please. So, Diana has to attest this. Diana, would you like to come in and sign off? 
that if we can't fund it, you need to fund the truck? <laughs> we don't have house. We can have her sign it. It's my pen. I wanted to Oh, you wanted to <laughs> Is she notarizing it? It's just a test. It doesn't. Oh, we didn't date it. No, my dear, the line was up there. What is this? It's, it's for the um, loan on the new truck. I'm just attesting to your signature, right? Mm -hmm. And you're sure I witness. Thank you. Get a crowd now. <laughs> <laughs> Happening. Happening. Right. Uh, I didn't have to make any transfers today because last week we had the um, electronic deposit come in from the state. Um, I noticed there were very few bills. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Don't jinx me. <laughs> Yeah, it was a nice quiet. W-2s are done. I have a couple um, changes to the highway budget that I wanted to just share and get approval for. Um, no additions, right? <coughs> no pages. No, I'm on page eight. Um, the overtime pay. Mm -hmm. I think rather than budgeting 19000 I think we'll be safe budgeting 16000 based on the previous year, and I figure we're kind of halfway through winter. Um, so How far down the page is that? It's uh, about halfway down. Um, Overtime? Yeah. Back pay? Overtime. Yeah, it's 02-6-10-10.10. Overtime? Oh, no, sorry. That's, That's overtime yeah. back pay. Um, it's 02-6-10-10.11. Uh, yeah. So what's that change to Michael? Uh, instead of nineteen thousand, I bring it down to sixteen thousand. Okay, I think we'll be okay based on last uh, year. Can I see your new financial statement? Yeah. After these last few storms. Um, What's, where are we at right now? Um, 8700 Yeah, so I think, I think we'll, be, we'll be okay. Are we be safe? Yeah, we might go a little bit over, but um, depends on what the rest of the winter is. So right, right. Um, but you know, the old rule of uh, Groundhog Day, you should have, your, have half your wood pile. I figure we're almost to Groundhog Day. Yeah, I get that. So that's kind of the halfway. Um, and winter did start early this year. It did. And then for the salt, um, and I wanted to share this with you guys just because uh, I have records for the salt. Um, I think we can, instead of having 15,000, I think we'll be safe at 12,000. Um, so where is the salt? Uh, I'm find it. I'm looking for it. It's at the very end, uh, last page, page 12, towards the top, road salt. Um, so, I just want to read you the ton. It, it tends to fluctuate quite a bit. So, in 2013 it was 61.50, 2014 it was 60.16, 2015 it was 76.16, 2016 it was 79.83, 2017 it was 77.44. Um, last year it was, and that's the amount we're um, paying right at the moment. It was it's 68.50, and then coming. This year, um, it's 79.75. So, and then each year, the actual amount of tons that we used starting in 2015 was 132. 2016, it was 89. 2017, it was 132. Last winter, it was 154. So, um, I'm guesstimating that this year will probably be pretty close to what it was last year. Let's say 150 tons. We contract for 175. Um, we're, oh, we. We reserve. We don't have to pay that. So, at that amount of salt, at the rate um, 79.75, um, 
twelve. It comes to less than twelve thousand dollars, but very close. So I think we'll be okay budgeting twelve thousand there. So it, it just it brings the expenses down a little bit. Just a little bit. bit. That's little nice, bit. though. Yeah. So. Um, and, that, and then I did talk to Greg about the um, rear end on the six-wheeler, mm. and he thought, you know, getting a, a used rear end would be around $2,500. $2, we have budgeted $1,500. We could just leave it there and see what the cost is, or we could bump that up a 1000 um, that, That's up to... Yeah, Yes, leave it there. Leave it there. Okay, I'm fine. Let him run it for a while longer. <coughs> yeah. Worst case scenario. He, he would. He you know. He's thinking that he would like to try to weld it. Um, yeah. Give it a shot. Give it a shot that it. way. And, um, so. In the springtime, we can consider getting rid of the F550. Yeah, the 550. I'm great sign with that. <coughs> um, he's grateful that you let him keep it for the winter. <laughs> nice job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Page five, as far as the is town a, office and the town hall. Is this in the new one? No. We're going up, it's still in the budget. Okay, page five. Do we want to keep those or do we want to use the, the building maintenance fund? Keep what now? Oh, the 2000. We have budgeted 2000 and 3000 for the town office and the town hall repairs. Right, where yep. they used to be just 1000 each. Mm -hmm. um, but we do have the. the um, we have the building. How much is in the building fund? Was it twelve thousand? I also gave. I'm not going to give you guys reports anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's the do to do to and do from. You yeah. didn't give it to us. Oh, I did. Oh, did you? Yeah, it was with this. So we do have some money in the building maintenance fund, so we could lower. I believe there's. Well, oh, that's what it's for. Right. Yeah. So why don't we use that instead? Yeah. I mean, that's what I thought we were going to use this past. Yeah, instead yeah, of raising any more. So, soldiers. do we want to put those back at a thousand, or do we want to put them at five hundred each? You want to zero them out? Zero. That's up to the board. That's not up to me. If well, we got plenty of money in there, I don't yeah, say zero. We, I mean, if we're going to take it out for things next year, we've got to start having a system of putting money into it every year. Is that like a building reserve fund? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Nope. Where's your fly slaughter? Right. So we have, or we could just, but you know, yeah. we got the money in there. The, money, the money's been the sitting there for a long time, and it hasn't been used. Keep taking money out of the general funds. Yeah. Why don't we put that down to some minimal level? Okay. You know, minimum maybe a hundred bucks or something like that, and just then, to keep the line item open. Right. And then just anticipate that whatever we do next year, either here or at the town hall, that we use. Some money from the building fund. Yeah, so 100 bucks on both of those? Yeah. Okay. I guess that gets us down a penny, maybe. Well, <laughs> yeah, I made some notes here on yet another spreadsheet. So, uh, yeah, I think I sent this out to the last year. If we lower, you know, a couple of the expenditures, we can, <laughs> excuse me, perhaps lower the rate by five cents or something. Like that. But since we have more to do to make the revenue requirements even less than we anticipated, we should wait mm -hmm. to do that final calculation. Mm -hmm. okay. And some. Some of the, you know, the, the voters will have their say. Uh, town meeting, yeah, the thirty-one thousand for the fire department capital fund, fourteen thousand dollars for the town auto place articles. So, you know, the voters will have their say. Yep. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Alrighty. So, when do you need? Do you need? What do you need from us in terms of budget? When would you like your budget? Oh, she's a quit asking. <laughs> yes, Friday is the last possible day for in, for information to come in, and then when Stephanie and I are going to work on it all weekend and get it to the printer on Monday. Okay. That's our plan. So this so coming Friday, so <coughs> we're pretty much done tonight unless we meet again. Well, Rick, you'll send that amended budget. And do you want me to do anything with the spreadsheet so we can calculate a really rough estimate on what the tax might be? 
No, I can, you have already sent that to me. So if you can plug the numbers in? Okay. Yep. If you need anything. Okay. We'll do. Good. All right, thank you. Perfect, thank you. We're going to reserve them. Hello, everyone. Uh, we never get any of them. We need real ones. I have a Okay, yeah. <laughs> you got your own personal one. Yeah. You go. Thank you. Okay, so here's a warning. The last couple of little details have been taken care of, and um, Susan had some suggestions for alphabetizing. <laughs> so I did that. Alphabetizing? Uh, yeah, she wanted to know the uh, allocations. It's, e it's kind of easier to follow them when one list is in alphabetical order and the other list is in alphabetical order. Did, did the, um, for well, the appropriation. Did the former Article 6 get yes. removed? Yes. Okay. Yes. And uh, we confirmed the due date for the taxes and brandy. And, you know, that was about all that was outstanding. Mm. And the way I did it this year was I totally set, well, I'm still not totally separated, but. Um, well, you've seen the draft of this. I put the town articles and then the school district articles I put exactly as they had in their signed warning, which is mm -hmm. going to be elsewhere in the document. So. so you're up for election this year, huh? I am. Are you running? Well, yeah, I, I, the only reason, the main reason I have to run is to get that school project, I mean that store project done. Mm -hmm. I can't promise to stay three years, because <laughs> I'm getting kind of old. Oh. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully somebody will show up and say, I'd like to be the town clerk in another couple of years, and I could start, you know. Grooming that person? Yeah. It's a, I mean, when I think about even putting this town report together, that's so much work. To, to train somebody to do that is... So we've got all hard. kinds of volunteers around here today. Really? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe not volunteers. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it is kind of at the point now where both the town clerk and the town treasurer, it's somebody would really need to train either bef after they're elected mm -hmm. or before. Um, they're just so complicated now. Yeah. Especially now with Nimrod. Right. You know, just, that's what I mean. Just, just, yeah. That program You alone. can't just walk into it. Crazy. It's a lot of training. That's why we have town beers. We're lucky. We're lucky like we had yeah. you know, town yeah. to yeah. for yeah. years. So. Love him. Yeah, town <laughs> is super. Yeah. So. And I had Marsha for a couple of years at least. Yeah, yeah. to get you started. Yeah. Yeah. So. And after after she <clears throat> finally got done with the second or third time, she was still and, available. And there's no real way, like with statue or whatever, you know, if somebody just gets elected as a town clerk or town treasurer total out of the blue with no experience, that's... You're dead. Well, that's yeah. what happened with Brandy, and we were lucky, really lucky that, that Tom was willing to... Right, because Marsha wasn't. Yeah, so if that happened to me, then, uh, you know, yeah. they'd be... I mean, a few years ago, uh, Rita Gravel really thought, or Rita Richardson really thought it would be a good idea if I wrote down everything I right. did. And I started that, and I did a really detailed, like, two-sheet list of how to run an election for a Hazen Union school budget. And now, we, and then we stopped doing it that way. So. Well, the elections are kind of a pain, too. With well, there are lots to know. A lot yeah. of volunteers and yeah. getting the right volunteers. Yeah. Any volunteers. Right. Yeah, ballot clerks, people who do sign-ins. The good thing is, is setting up no for, one's irreplaceable. No, that's good. So if I drop dead, then you can have my job. <laughs> Do I look like no. <laughs> I want the job? Mm -hmm. You get the combo then. I get what? You get the combo then. What's that? Vault. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. But he's been there for a while, and you can have the combo. <laughs> that's a 
big plus. It if, really if you is. You ever hand me the <laughs> combo? You better have some way to resuscitate. You're a big combo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, our our progress on the store project, the FEMA project, the uh, what was that plan you that we're working on? The hazard? local hazard mitigation. Local plan. hazard mitigation has been yeah. approved by FEMA. Yeah. And since it's approved by FEMA, we can now start to receive any FEMA funds associated with this mm -hmm. project and any other project that mm -hmm. has any mm -hmm. FEMA grant money yeah. associated with it. Right. So yeah. we're good for five more years, so put that in your bring up right. for year four mm -hmm. to start working on that, even mm -hmm. though we did it in two lightning time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like two and a half months. Yeah. And the, um, I haven't thoroughly read that email that you sent, but they mentioned that there was a further approval process. That yeah, we Ashley, Ashley Andrews and I have to get together. <laughs> okay. There are three dates within the uh, within the plan mm -hmm. that have to be agreed upon. Mm -hmm. When she submitted it, mm -hmm. you know, when, she, when FEMA approved it, and a date when we signed it. Mm -hmm. And without those dates, it's, it's still it's unapproved. Not a, not a so as soon as we get together and sign that, mm -hmm. send it along to Stephanie Smith uh, from Water Emergency mm -hmm. Management, mm -hmm. then we're good to go. Mm -hmm. And then that kicks in the SAM, mm -hmm. you know, the federal <laughs> SAM, so Sam's we can get money yeah. deposited Uncle into Sam. our checking account. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, Uncle Sam, I never thought of that. <laughs> I just on a, a side note, I have myself signed up for a training seminar for the local man management um, hazard local. management plan. It a, used to be called the local emergency operations plan. Now it's oh, local e emergency e management plan. E Apparently, it's been totally rewritten, rewritten um, so that people need to go and figure uh, out. We just completed that. Well, no, yeah, it's, that's a yearly thing. Yeah. The, the other one, the local hazard mitigation plan, is a five-year five year cycle. Deal, yeah. The other is a yearly cycle. The other is, a, like, um, emergencies that aren't hazardous related? Like, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I really, I'm going to ask the question, yeah. why do we have these two things? Well, I think one is more state oriented. It's mm -hmm. more a state thing, and the other one is more federal. federal. You know, yeah. FEMA. So if we have a big snowstorm and hard work electric goes down for weeks, then we would open up the school, turn the generator on, and yeah. have that as a warming yeah. station. Pajama party. Pajama party. <laughs> but that one's kind of due to be done by the 1st of May, so mm. we'll start working on it after town meeting. Well, wow. thank you guys for doing all that work. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question about the project? About what? Sh this the, project? The, the yeah. Country store project? Mm -hmm. So what now, so the funds are approved? What's the time timeline the for the next... Of the oh my. Well, it's been we, a long time coming. Huh? Yeah, it has been a long time coming. Um, do you want to explain, Diane? Well, I've got a, a big timeline I can share with you. We, if yeah, we have to go crazy. over it again right now, it's going to take another well, half an hour or so. Well, this open year. in the I, summer. This year? This year. Yeah. I can give you a okay. 30. Yeah. Um, we have the clean site letter, which was the last thing that we needed in order to, um, to get the grant money um, and this local hazard mitigation plan was another thing that so um, we should we're everything's been done to get uh, get the award um, but that decision now will be formal formalized so um, um, and then there's other other parts too but we're, we're pretty much done all all the stuff that we needed to do before. Yeah. So, so we're really hoping that this things get into action this we're hoping that, that this summer we're, we're going to be looking at the RFPs for the demolition and um, the, for the work um, tonight. Actually, we'll be awarding the uh, not a contract because we'll have to enter into a contract, but you know we'll be awarding to the bidder who we selected the ability to start into contract negotiations with them. So another another good step, uh, the federal government went back to work mm -hmm. and EPA opened up and they immediately approved uh, spending the money for the phase one plan and Great. survey. Thanks, so that's sir. another $6,000 that's coming our way mm -hmm. with no local math. <coughs> mm -hmm. so, okay. Yeah. It's exciting. Really. And the contractor has been approved, I think, Stone Environmental. Actually, the surveyor was already in here one day last week. Cool. 
Well, for the deed survey? Yeah, starting to do the survey work. I mean, she's going to have to go way, way back to find anything. But you, you guys have seen this, right? Yes. Okay, so we've got four yep. bids. So we do have four bids. Mm -hmm. First, Lamberti Excavation. They will do the actual, or they bid on the actual demolition in partnership with the Catamount Environmental, who is the asbestos remover person or vendor. Second bidder was Mountainside Excavation, again partnering with Catamount Environmental. You want to give the total? Because what's his name? Comes probably going to ask. Well, I can just give him. <laughs> Third, sorry, Michael. Nice. <laughs> I can do that. Okay. Lamberti's Lim total cost was seventy. Uh, excuse me, ninety-three thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars to remove, to demo the store, the barn, and to remove all the asbestos that's now migrated throughout the structure. Second mount, again, mountainside excavation. Total cost was ninety-six thousand eight hundred dollars. Third was Blue Mountain Trucking and Excavating working again with uh, Catamount Environmental. Their total cost for the same work was $81,931. Then lastly, Dubois Construction, working with a company called Alderson to do the asbestos uh, removal. Glad people are sitting down. It's $147,950. So that being said, uh, both Diana and I checked into the background information that Blue Mountain Trucking and Excavating sent along with us, and they're highly regarded. Uh, the town of Barry, excuse me, Barry City, you know, had a lot of good things to say about that. Mm -hmm. So, with that, I would like to, any discussion on any of the Don Marsh also kind of yes, Don gave Marsh, his stamp of approval. Who's our engineer? Yep. Uh, gave the stamp of approval yeah. and said that everything being equal, we should go with the lowest bidder. He felt confident that the lowest bidder in this case could do the job. Sometimes it doesn't work like that, but in this case, he felt confident. Mm -hmm. So, doing our due diligence, I unless. Ryan, do you have any questions? I just have, I have a question. Um, this does not include the restoration work. Stream, it does not. No, okay, so that would be an additional. Right. This is to bring it to grade. Yep. 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 And okay. whatever happens to the stream after that mm -hmm. will be another hurdle that we have to right. jump over. Yep. Yep. Okay. So, anyhow, progress. Yeah, somebody want to make a motion to... I am going to. Oh, you're going to do it? <laughs> Cheer, chairman. Would you yeah. like to do it? No, no, I'm not. A, no, no, I'm not. No, no, I can't. <laughs> so I would like to introduce a motion that we enter into contract negotiations with Blue Mountain Trucking and Excavation, working along with Catamount Environmental to do the demolition and... Uh, Hazard mitigation at uh, the Woodbury, Old Woodbury Country Store. I'll, I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. My question is, well, oh, well, well, not really, but you mean you said enter into negotiations? So Do you want that not going to notice the bid award okay. until yeah. Yeah. after? Don't want the other ones or anything? Nah. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna call everyone. Oh, or, okay. Or, or if you want to drop them an email. Yeah. I wonder is it uh, usual uh, practice that I would just notify everybody who was involved on the email list and who bid for what and yeah, why some, not? yeah sometimes yeah. yeah. It's been yeah, good for I've them to know it. what the other guys bid. Yeah. You know, maybe well, they'll 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 some of them have called, mm -hmm. but I didn't. It's a public tell document. Anything. That's yeah. true. You know, yeah, so. it's public now. Mm -hmm. yeah. so Especially wanted, this guy at 147. That was yeah, Du Bois. Yeah. He was way <laughs> off the mark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know yeah. how that yeah. is. It's just so uh, mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah. So, anyhow. Mm -hmm. So, you're going to drop them a note. I'm going to talk to Blue Mountain Trucking myself tomorrow. Okay, great. And we can sit down and. Talk about logistics. Mm -hmm. okay. And hope the building doesn't fall in. Well, we mentioned that in the RFP. Though. Mm -hmm. 
if it falls in, it falls in. Now we're getting a lot of snow this year. Mm -hmm. No one shoveled the roof off, probably before the rain last year. It's still standing. I was so tempted to hire somebody to do that and pay him mm -hmm. myself. But I didn't. Shovel the roof off in that store? Yeah. No, I, before the rain came last year. Not week. shovel, not get up there, but oh, you know, try say. to pull it down. Oh, pull as much as you could oh. with a roof rake. You know? <laughs> if they had ever fallen into that asbestos. The last time I ever mentioned that, you said, oh, I don't want to tell you that. I'm going to you that. So anyhow, big so step forward. So I just hope it won't. Yeah. Right. Okay. What's next? Yeah. Diana will be staying, I guess, as Tom Crow. Sounds like it. If I get elected. If you get elected. If you get elected. If I get elected. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Your approvals. <laughs> <laughs> well then. <laughs> All right. So next on the Tom, agenda is the. Uh, Tom Rhodes report. Yeah. Sorry we're a little bit behind schedule. Well, I'll be very brief. We'll, we'll go fast. Be brief, yeah. So um, I know the last few meetings I've been saying <laughs> that, um, you know, all the equipment's holding up and everything's going well. Um, and uh, last, a week ago, this yesterday, the, the big snowstorm that we had, uh, everything kind of, uh -huh. the worker had a pretty rough day. I just... You know, and I know some people were concerned um, about the condition of the roads later on Sunday and on Monday. So I'd just like to kind of briefly uh, outline what they dealt with on Sunday. They basically put in 16 hours that day. Um, so initially, um, on Greg's truck, truck number two, the plow broke. Um, so they weren't able to use that truck at all. Um, number two is, are, is Greg. Greg Parker's. Uh, oh, Greg Parker's. Yeah, Greg Parker's. What a big yeah. great um, And then on truck number one, the other big 10 wheeler, um, which is the truck that Tim drives, um, he forgot to raise the wind plow backing up, so it, it also was broken temporarily. They were able to repair that that day, but that was another thing that they dealt with. Um, the low pro, the new truck, um, the uh, solenoid on the PTO. Um, burnt out hmm. um, and it looks like so basically he didn't have it, the hydraulic system on the low pro didn't work at all so that was that's the plows the wing plow everything everything um, and then on the there was a height so they got the 550 <coughs> going um, they had to repair a hydraulic hose and that during the day uh, to keep it running um, so the six wheeler was out in the yard um, you know, kind of mothballed for the winter, so they, it started, luckily, um, and they had to put chains on it and put a plow on it so they could use that to plow with on Sunday. Um, and with the cold weather, the, you know, the temperatures and the wind, you know, they would take a truck out with sand and before they could finish sanding, the sand would freeze. Wow. So that's basically what they were dealing with on Sunday. Even getting the sand out of the ground, he told me they're having to bust it up because yeah. it was frozen. So, um, who so said is it? Our sand. Yeah, where you come from? <laughs> <laughs> that would be that would be true of any sand anywhere. Yeah. I think. But, um, so you know, part of Monday they basically had to take two trucks to Burlington. Um, so uh, Greg's truck, you know, they took the plow off and, and left it. Um, they left it with Viking to be repaired, uh, and Greg drove to Viking on Saturday to get the plow it was finished so that you know. Um, this is Greg Adams. Greg, no, this is Greg Parker. Okay. So, who, what, you know, whatever kind of weather we got, you know, we got six inches of snow yesterday that we were supposed to get. So, so the truck would be ready. Um, and uh, the low pro, they were able to fix it, you know, right on the spot. So that was back in operation um, that Monday when it returned. Um, so, you know, they didn't get to some of the roads on Monday either. Um, uh, so, and then, um, you know, they were doing maintenance work and they found a crack in the same spot on Tim's 10-wheeler, which they repaired, they welded. Um, crack in what? There's a, a, a piece that, there's a, um, the truck mount on, the mount for the plow on the truck has a kind of a pivot pin on it. And um, so the plow, so you could swing it. And the bracing um, on the mount on the truck, um, for Greg, it had, it had, 
pretty much broken. It wasn't completely broken off, but the plow was, you know, you couldn't operate it. And, uh, on Tim's, they discovered a crack pretty much in the same same spot. Really? So they welded that, and uh, what Greg Parkers is going to do is have um, a spare parts made. Viking's going to make that part so that um, if they discover a crack, um, you know, they can just replace it. Um, so, um, so it was kind of a a day, um, a long day on Sunday, and um, so that kind of explains, you know, the quality of the plowing on the roads that day. They just they had a bad day. Yeah. Um, and um, <coughs> so. Is it worth um, communicating that somehow, like on what great connections or something? Because I, I did notice that there were some negative yeah. feedback, and and people spoke up to it, but I don't know that people really understood the full picture of right. what, I mean, I don't know if you want to go there or not. It would be good, because that is yeah. a fuller picture of what right. happened. Yeah. You know, why the trucks weren't yeah. out as right. much as they should have been. I, I could, could do that. Been. I mean, I, I'm more comfortable with doing it on a front porch forum, but all the complaints do seem to be on Woodbury Connections. Um, well, Michael, if you drop me a note, I'll put it on. Okay, I, I have, tr I have <laughs> been able to place things on there, but it's kind of hit or miss for me. Um, so. Um, it also might be good to go on the website too, just as right. news. You know. yeah. I don't know how many folks use the website, but well, I'm trying I, to steer people to the website by. I could type this up as a kind of mini road report, like we're doing this yeah. summer, and I could send it to you. Yeah, just if you want to put it, yeah, just the, these lines. Certainly, it, you won't please everybody. No. There will still be the negative no. comments, but at least yep. people will get the full information. Mm -hmm. More people will understand. Yeah. You know? yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a good point. We will do that. Yeah. yeah. The bulk so. of the people understand. Mm -hmm. Anybody's lived here for any length of time knows right. that yeah, you're true. not always going to get found out. <laughs> <laughs> right. Especially the snowstorms we've had. But yeah. 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 yeah more coming too. More, more coming more. again twi hey, tomorrow. Tomorrow yeah. night. Yeah. It's exciting. I'm supposed to drive to Burlington early Wednesday morning, so oh. I don't know. Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe I'll have a good excuse not <laughs> to. Um, so that's pretty much that's it. That's all. Um, it's all the. Everything is repaired. Everything's back in place mm -hmm. now. So. Um, Peter Daly got his CDL. Yeah. Yeah. Which is. So now we have two full times and two, two subs. Two subs. So we're. Yeah. That can drive for drive any yeah. any truck that we have. Mm -hmm. so. And I know Greg was out today. Um, Greg Parker is pushing back the snow banks a bit in anticipation of more snow tomorrow night. So. Yeah, he had the uh, bucket loader out. Yeah. The front end loader down at the, in the center of the town. Can I ask yeah. a question? The, um, lot, the, the, the lot that's in the town, village, yeah. the head, it now has a whole big pile of snow in the middle park? of the, which, which the park, the, the park. little yeah. park. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the town did that or? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just wondered. Because we can't that. put it in the... Uh, but we used to it's put like it. where do you put the snow? We used, used to put it in where the skating rink is, yeah. but now that has yeah. Yeah. skating rink. Yeah, Elizabeth Stratton would kill us if we started. <laughs> you know, I, Greg, Greg and I had a thought for that that we never really got around to, but in the future with the skating rink, um, do you remember when we used to do recycling there? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. You know, if we had, um, if people parked in the school parking lot mm -hmm. for skating and we had a, a walk, a stairway mm -hmm. down to the skating rink, but we, we would have to build that. Um, mm -hmm. That would allow a place in the village to dump the snow um, and it might actually be a nicer way to get to the skating rink in the future. There would be definitely more parking. I don't know how much it's used and you know, like on a weekend or if there's a parking issue. Um, you sure you don't want to dump snow that close to the brook because yeah, some of it would be right. contaminated with dirt. Right. Yeah. There'd be more sand going into the river right mm -hmm. there where they're trying to mm -hmm. you're yeah, like try to, just trying to avoid. <laughs> yeah. Another idea I had yeah. was uh, if uh, Scott Ackley ever decided he'd like to sell that extra piece of land he has across the street. Empty. Oh, by Richards. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah uh -huh. because that's not by a stream, which is... Yeah. Actually, yeah. the other pile that's in the village between the post office and the, and the <coughs> fire department building, that's another right behind sighted the erosion spot that we're, you know, in the future, might have a catch basin there. 
Right. So, you know, that's now all that snow is going right into the river too. But you know, where do you put it? That's the yeah. Years ago they were trying to have us haul it out of town and dump it up beyond Diana's and that. Uh -huh. But same thing, it melts and it runs down mm -hmm. in the same place. So mm -hmm. it's where do you think you want some snow over by your place? <laughs> You're looking for some place to move it. It'd be a temporary <laughs> landfill. <laughs> so <laughs> <running around there. laughs> yeah, it'd be a lot of transportation to get the snow out. And there's yeah. just, it's just it's, there's no good way. There's it's no spring. Good way. Well, yeah, once, spring. You, once we take down the trees in Mr. McGlenn's oh, yeah. property. Yeah, we can truck it over there. Yeah. We can truck it over there. There you go. Might have to pay a fee for that. I'm not even going to. He would charge. He would well, charge. Start kicking it off. What do you owe? Yeah, really. <laughs> Thanks for the suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> we'll table that. <laughs> That's it. Oh, cool. Okay. Those poor guys, huh? Yeah. And then so. you have to read on front porch for you know, some someone jumping all over you. Especially another plow truck driver. Well, just he knows better. Yeah. It's just his personal because he, yeah, he, he works for us for a little while or, or not. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah, it is. It's How it's winter in Vermont. Yeah. But they've done a great job. On they do their best. That okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got no complaints. Very pleased. Yeah. I live on the bus route, and that road is plowed every day before the bus comes. My kids have made it safely on bus number nine for nine years, so mm -hmm. yeah. I'm really appreciative. Yeah, that's quite a hill where you are. Yeah. It yeah. is, yes. It's going down, yeah. 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 Bus number nine. Bus number nine. I know I noticed the difference heading into um, Montpelier on Friday after the rain. We got um, get to the Woodbury Callis line and um, the road from Callis down into um, North, North Callis was definitely pretty rough with Ruts of ice, um, so. mm -hmm. and no sand. Well, so they have the initiative, wow. I guess. Yeah. <clears throat> well, yeah, the issue, or? It's an end of the road kind of deal for them. That's that's kind of the because oh. once I got down into um, North Calus, the roads were fine there. But. Cool. There's a section with no sand at all, right in that, right near number right. ten. <clears throat> yeah, and they're having they're running out of sand already. Really? Yeah, yeah. Like Toby Talbot posted a thing on the front porch forum about. Palace and their same pond, getting low. So, so that mountain of sand down by the town garage is it's good. To, the bigger the better. <laughs> sure. <laughs> we could sell them some. Yeah. <laughs> we have a reciprocal agreement with them, don't we? Not for sand. <coughs> oh, I know. <laughs> All right. Okay. Michael, you wanted to talk about something about the Kingsbury branch and the. Yeah, you want to do that now or. Um, I have some more. I, well, I had this. Yeah, I found now, it. Wow, it was right there. Well, so we talked about it quite a bit um, at our last meeting, and one of the things that um, we agreed to provide for the um, grant for the full design um, was a letter of support. So Pam De Andrea sent me uh, a template of the letter of support. I did some, <coughs> uh, made some changes, um, sent it back to her. Um, and she sent me this copy. Um, I dated it and added our names to sign. Um, so this is in association with the Clean Water Initiative Program mm -hmm. Ecosystems Restoration Grants Budget. Right. This 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 um, grant that we're applying for um, would be the next step from the <coughs> um, Kingsbury Branch Tactical Basin Plan survey that was. Um, that we were part of with a grant with the Regional Planning Commission, yeah. Um, yeah. and we had picked That's five priority sites, um, most of them in the village, um, and this will provide for um, full design yeah. for those different sites. And then we, you know, there's no <clears throat> commitment to to implement the, the um, total plan. The total, the total plan is 51 sites. The, yeah. We picked pick five priority sites. Mm -hmm. One of them, the road crew, um, fixed this summer, um, the, the ditching down Valley Lake Road down to the school. Um, so the other priority site now is the salt shed at the town garage to try to contain the salt 
runoff um, into the wetland area, which is part of the Kingsbury branch also, because of that water runs into the Kingsbury branch. So the other four sites are in the village. Um, one of them is the school parking lot. Um, the other is the uh, fire department annex building. Um, the other is the um, between the um, post office and the fire department, that swale or what, that where runoff runs right into the Kingsbury branch. And the other is pretty much the bottom of um, Church Street and the drainage that, that flows to the bottom of Church Street and the bottom of the Cabot Road um, basically kind of come together um, there. So those are the four sites. And, um, what they're asking, what the 30% the design is calling for is um, in three of those sites there would be these catch basins, um, which would basically catch the sediment, uh, erosion from the roads, whatever. Um, and then part of our agreeing to operation and management um, of those sites would be eventually we'd, we'd have to figure out a way of cleaning them out because um, they would fill up and then we would need to clean them out so that they would continue to work. Um, the, the school parking lot would basically be um, sort of some sloping to the Valley Lake Road side, um, ditching along the, the edge of the uh, parking lot, which would run um, down to the catch basin um, by the uh, firehouse in the, the annex building. Um, and that should solve the flooding problem in the annex building also. Um, um, so, you know, my, as I, as I mentioned last um, meeting, my, my thinking is that we would probably, you know, the priorities for us, in, in my thinking, for um, these four priority sites in the village is to deal with the school parking lot and the annex building so that we can eliminate the flooding. Um, and then the other two we would do them, you know, um, having the design plans we could apply in the future for grants to help pay for that. They would probably be matching grants. Um, and, you know, so next summer would be just the design work. We would have the five full designs. Um, and then, in the best case scenario, the next summer we would take care of the school parking lot runoff, um, the runoff um, that goes to the annex building and it comes from the annex building um, and hopefully at the same time pave the um, section of Valley Lake Road from Route 14 up to probably with an apron into the school parking lot so that we wouldn't have the pothole situation that we have. Um, and now now there's some weird thing going on. Um, Greg Parkhurst has scraped it down three times now but right um, shortly after you get off Route 14 there's like a curb of ice where Valley Lake Road starts, and it gets pretty significant. Um, I know um, a friend's Prius kind of bottomed out on it a couple of weeks ago. Um, he can't do anything about it until there's warm weather. The ice is just too hard. Um, but we don't know what's causing that. Um, but I'm kind of worried about what, what it might be like in the spring. It's it's a nice straight line. There's I don't there's nothing underneath it that I know of. But could it be water coming out of the basement of the store being pumped out? Mm. If it was, it'd be pumping it right on into the lawn of the church because it's uh -huh. it's not near the brook. Yeah. It's what, 25, 30 feet from the brook. Yeah. Because the pavement ends yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, midway. Yeah. So anyway, that's just I would think that they've got a sump pump that's pumping into the brook. I, I know they've got a pump, but I thought it was coming out near the road though. Yeah, it used to come out the back into the brook, I remember. I think it was changed though when they first moved in because it flooded real bad. Mm -hmm. So, and then um, we talked about a 10%, 20% match, and um, so um, I did the figures for the road crew, their time and the equipment rental, and my time, and 10% was definitely, we, we definitely got to 10%, it was sure. more of a question mark about 20%, so Pam will um, write the grant for a 10% match. And that's approximately... For our part of the match is fifty four hundred and thirty dollars. Right. Is this yeah. template still? Yeah, that template still is still. Okay. still <coughs> yeah. So, so there would be no out of out of, know, out of pocket yeah. <coughs> other than paying the road crew. How Paul's still concerned about the height of the road. 
Yeah, well, we it's we did lower the road this fall. Yeah, we didn't lower it enough. Okay, well, enough um, because it's yeah. still higher than is right. Into yeah, the power well, station. yeah. I mean, we would have to see whether you know if we can pretty much eliminate any water coming down. Um, you know that should solve that problem, and you know, we can road lower the road more. Yeah, it um, should let the state people know that that right. is a problem that, that we've got to work on. Yeah, yeah. So we'll let them know before. Here. We have let them yeah. know. Yeah, we've so been talking to state people about this for quite yeah, yeah. a few years. I have one question for you. Sure. After you um, demolish the little store and the barn, mm -hmm. would that area not also become um, an area of concern with the flooding coming? Right well, the whole reason and th <laughs> that whole grant is based on the flooding issue. It has nothing right. to do with the, uh, the eyesore of the building. Um, no, I understand that. But so once that's cleared and gone. Won't that area also become a concern of flooding? Uh, well, we would still have to um, fix the bottleneck that's the culvert that goes underneath the store. Yeah, that's part of the stream restoration. Um, that's that's another part of the project that okay. that yeah. will follow. Yeah, the part is the double culverts under Route yeah. 14 yeah. that the state yeah. is going to have to yeah. deal it's with. It's a thing yeah. that they would... Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, in the future with the store gone, we can keep an eye on the double culvert to make sure there isn't any debris there, but we will... We will have to um, remove the, um, you know, basically part of it is a foundation to the store, is one part of the, the stream constriction, and the other part is just uh, the old granite blocks that were put there, you know, how many. So that's still another part of that project that will need to be done. Right, okay. Once, once, the, yeah. once the store is gone. Right. right. Yeah. And we did factor in for that with the original grant, um, mm -hmm. that, the restoration part. Um, so we'll just we'll see when we get there, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so. So I say we move forward. If if um, I'm I'm definitely you know would would like to have the design. I mean, without the designs, we would have much harder work uh, approaching different entities for grant money to help pay for the implementation. Um, and as there's no money out-of-pocket expense for the town. For this, you know. yeah. 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 The, the designs the can be done and, you know, then we, you know, there's no time constraint on when we have to implement that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so then we can work with, like I said, the firemen and everybody else that's right. involved there. Right. Just to you know, I'm hoping, hoping with the design that we can tackle <coughs> those two sites um, the next summer. Um, Pam, you know, has some ideas for people that we can approach for um, for grants for that. Um, so. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I'd like to then introduce a motion that we sign this letter of support mm -hmm. and become part of this ecosystem restoration program mm -hmm. and apply for the grant. Second. In favor? Aye. You know, when I asked Pam about it, it does seem like a lot of money just to do the design work, but <laughs> uh, she mentioned that the part of the, the full design would be taking care of all the permits, state permits, um, you know, all of the kind of groundwork that we would need to do um, to implement a project. So Forty thousand dollars is a lot. Yeah, but it is a lot of money. It's not our money. Fortunately. Well, Someone's money. Fortunately, the grant. Everybody's yes. money. <laughs> Directly, it's not. It's indirectly, it probably is. <laughs> Somewhere. Okay, so I will try not to lose this. And uh, <laughs> so maybe I'll give it to Diana to scan before we move to the center. All right. Okay. Anything else, Michael? No. Nope. Nope. Right. Okay. Nope. Next on the agenda, and I'm sorry that we're late, mm -hmm. but uh, is the uh, Woodbury Elementary School discussion. And I have a bulleted item, lease of the town owned buildings to the Woodbury Elementary District. So I think you folks have been, and we should introduce Phoebe Slater from the uh, <coughs> school board, Stephen from the school board as well. So we've Stephen decided Murphy. that the town of Woodbury owns the school, we have. and we are going to, as the town, lease it back to the school board. 
The school district. School district. Yeah. Okay. okay. District board. So then you guys in turn are going to lease it to the new well, elementary this, thing? What we're no. talking about today is just for the rest of the school year just, through yes. June. And then we do need to figure out the next steps. But okay. the conversation tonight is just for right. yep. this yeah. one. I think Patrick and I have been sharing emails with you folks. So here's the, the latest iteration of the lease. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, that right there if you want to read it. Oh. <laughs> and it's... I want to block the camera. <laughs> and it's you know, verbatim as to what was you know, put out on email. We didn't have much of a discussion on it because we're cognizant of the open meeting law, so this is why we're discussing it tonight. So it's a standard lease, and we wouldn't be charging the school district any money for it. The lease would be more like you guys take care of the building, use it for educational purposes. The town would have access to it for, among other things, town meeting, pie breakfast, anything that we pickleball, you know, mm -hmm. volleyball, anything that we use it for now. And, and so it's it's in the lease. Um, and and the town is responsible for the maintenance cleanup of town events? And Correct. As opposed to the school right. district? Just, just as it is now. Yeah. Only, you know, we have to put, you know, something a lot more formal than we have been doing. And I think one of the reasons why we haven't had anything as formal as this is no one understood that the town owns the buildings and the land. But I think it was We're just something that, that kind mm. of came into being yeah. and there was never anything formal. It was just kind of the way they did it in the old days and that's just the way it's gone for yeah. 100 years. It's not broken, it? mm. Well, we're being forced to, yeah, well, it's, quote, fix it. We want to, well, uh, yeah. So do you guys have any issues with signing the lease with the town? Does well, the school board want to review it as a body? I yeah. believe so. I think we it's have on a, our yeah. It is. Meeting. Okay. Yeah. Um, when I asked, I checked in with other folks from the board that couldn't attend, and they there were no concerns. I mean, it was pretty standard. There were, I think, um, a couple questions about like the reserve fund and how that would play into all this. And but Patrick was saying that Joanne would be at our meeting next week or this week, and that that was going to be part of the discussion. But for tonight. We were all more interested to hear what you had to say, and there I were no I concerns. about that, but that'll be yeah. after we have Yeah, that reserve fund, you know, I can recall to last last year's town meeting that we put funds into the building, we actually took funds out of the reserve to, uh, you know, make the operating cost you know, less. Mm -hmm. But there is money in the reserve fund, I'm pretty sure about $130,000 mm -hmm. in the building maintenance reserve fund that should be utilized for building maintenance. And to hear the CFO of the OSSU saying that he's not going to release those funds, you know, to me that raised a real red flag. And I don't think he has the power to do that, to withhold funds from a reserve fund. His express meeting was to repair the building. I don't think he has that, that power to do that. But anyhow, that'll all come out. It's my understanding that entering into this lease would enable us to use those funds that were designated for building maintenance on the building. Mm -hmm. I think without any complications with the well, that CFO great. or otherwise. That, that, yeah. that would be great. Yeah. Yes. And I was think, thinking if there was an issue, then the town itself could put out the RFP, you know, if basically if we own the building, if that yeah. would be a way around that, if there is... RFP for the roof? Yeah. yeah. Have so you done that yet? They haven't written, but they aren't no. able to send it out now because of this merger can, issue. I don't we can know. set on the RFP. Do you have a, a thumbnail of it, or do you have a draft of it? I don't yeah. know. I think, I, I, think I, I think there is one. They yeah. did say they should get it out this time of year just to catch the, the contractors plan. before. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what happened last year. It didn't get out. Well, yeah, and we just to get the right stuff back. Right. So. Because as, as Brandy will attest to, we have some insurance stipulations in all of our RFPs that a contractor would have to meet. 
certain levels of insurance that they have to possess in order to do work for us. So if you send us the bones of your RFP, we can attach all the boilerplate that we have to attach to it and run it by everyone. Skip has written many RFPs. Mr. RFP. As far as this one, it was pretty straightforward and Mm -hmm. no one any mm -hmm. the, only, yeah. the only thing I, and, and Patrick put this in, is the 14 acres of wetlands. Okay, you guys own that 14 acres of wetlands, so I don't know what the mechanics are or would be to convey that to us, right. to the town. You know, that's, you would have to deed that or we, the town would have to purchase it for a dollar or for whatever. You know, just, it's in the lease. However, you guys own that 14 acres of land, mm -hmm. wetlands. So I was curious why Patrick wanted that in there. But well, we had talked about maybe the school district selling it to right. a town just so everything is. Yep. So if you could draw up a purchase and sale agreement, we would be happy to sign that for 14 acres. That's what it takes to protect it, I guess. Mm. I'm not really sure what the supervisory <laughs> union would want of it. But. I think they yeah. see it as an asset that they would want it to be able to be a part of the whole package, right? right. Yeah. And that if anything were to happen with, you know, right, like it goes right back to the town, because the conversation. That's, well, that's, so that's part of the article. Right. Green, right. But there mm -hmm. are certain stipulations on right. if the town would convey that to them for a dollar, they would convey it back to us for a dollar under these conditions for five years. Mm -hmm. But then in, when we met with last time at the school board meeting, um, those five stipulations were part of the default articles of agreement and, and my impression was from what Joanne said is that we could <clears throat> work, work that, you know, make that anything that we wanted. Mm -hmm. so well, I don't know about that. That okay, is well, that's, yeah. <coughs> subject to agreement with the other towns. It would oh, be, okay. The, <clears throat> amending the articles would require either approval by each town mm -hmm. or, or um, a vote among the entire electorate. So there are, yeah, some articles may be amended um, on an affirmative vote of each town. Some require a majority of the entire electorate. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So also, when you, when you talk about conveying property, there's a statute, and it's Title 24, Chapter 33, and uh, conveyance of real estate. So if a municipality wants to convey real estate to anyone, we have to have a public meeting warned and it has to be a 30-day warning for this public meeting and if anyone objects then we have to put it up to a vote. Okay, we just can't arbitrarily hand it over to the school district mm -hmm. because it's protected by statute. And my only question with this is, you know, the word convey, does convey mean sell or does mm -hmm. convey also mean lease? So I have to talk to Paul. Paul so that. And my impression from the school board meeting, the last school board meeting, um, again, I think it was either Joanne or the, was that the lawyer that was there? It was a CFO. Okay. Um, that probably the new union district would not be interested in the Woodbury School if it, of, of leasing it. <clears throat> they, that, that was something that they would probably not want to deal with. Yeah. It might just be a tactic. Well, that's, mm -hmm. I'll tell you, based on the, the meetings I've attended, there doesn't seem to be support for enrolling students in Woodbury if it's leased. And I say that because there's, there's, um, there's going to be increases in the budget. Last Monday I attended a meeting, it was a joint meeting of the Budget Advisory Group and the Articles Committee. And the good news came from that meeting was that Woodbury and Stannard um,
qualify for small school grants so, yeah. for this year. Okay. So that's good news. Um, Woodbury and Lakeview. Thank you, yes, Woodbury and Lakeview. Um, and with the inclusion of the small school grants, the budget would, uh, the, the entire budget for the for the new union district mm -hmm. would fall under the, the threshold set by the state, so we would not be in, in the penalty phase. Mm -hmm. So that, money, that small school grant would go towards that whole district budget? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. So that $40,000 that they were over? Yes. 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 So it's going to be just one budget for all the schools yes. now? Yes. Okay. yes. But each school can individually get a grant? Um, like Woodbury is here getting a grant? Woodbury and Lakeview. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But he's saying, what he's saying is that it's all going to go into the pot for the yes. right. new that, district. And from my understanding, as Joanne explained at the last special meeting of the school board, the, the money designated for the school grant would go specifically to that school that spent on that building. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't become um, absorbed into the, yeah. the budget. No, the, the not, general sorry, budget. I thought you just said the opposite. <coughs> no, I, it's, it would be applied to the budget, but I believe it would be the it would be spent it would be a, yeah, it would be spent on on the school itself or within that school. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. Um, so, uh, getting back to the point that I led with, I believe there's going to be um, increases in the taxes based on what we heard at that, that meeting. I don't know specifically how much, to what extent, um, but there is, I think there is, there is no support or little support for enrolling students in a, in a building that would be leased. Mm -hmm. So. It's it, why, why it puts us in. Why is that? Yeah. Yeah, there seems to be a lot of may and could and could not and. Yeah, it's well as we as we've discussed a few times now in in various groups and meetings. There's there's nothing in these articles um, that 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 squarely addresses the point of ownership by a town. Right, I know. Yeah, that, yeah. That was just left out. You know. Yeah. And it can't be unique to Woodbury yeah. that we're a town that owns our school. So other schools must be in the same quagmire of. Well, so, so the other alternative would be if, if you know, if we want to keep the school open, that should be, you know, the town should, should probably try to decide that as a body. Um, the other alternative, if they are going to want to keep the school open with a lease is to sell the property, the school, um, to the new union district for a dollar with the understanding that when they, if they decide to close it at some point in the future that it would be sold back to the town for a dollar. That's without a lot of restrictions. Yeah, without the restrictions. Without restrictions though, I mean, isn't it pretty general though? I mean, it says that basically it's that you can't the biggest restriction is that you can't sell it right. within you five years, and, or if you do, you have to like pay. Yes. But it, but you use it for. I mean, it was yeah. pretty general of like it community general. and yeah. Yeah. purposes. Yeah, but community and public uses that you know leaves would leave us with a school that we had to pay to upkeep without being able to rent it out or anything else. Yes. That well, that's part of our you know our assuming ownership. That's that's what happens when you buy a house. Or but property. yeah, but you should be able to. Get some profit to pay your debts, not to right. Just hold well, it and I mean, you, if if the, if a part of it is for used for community use, and then somehow it does get developed in a way, um, it, it, it that would be tricky. You're right. Um, who would pay to develop it? That would probably be somebody private, as opposed to right. That's Woodbury, why the five town. Five years of community and public right. use, and how you know is restrictive. What would be, you know, who would who would use it? How you know? What would happen there? Um, yeah, it could be a big responsibility for the town um, or liability, I guess, yeah. which comes with responsibility. Um, but. but because of that, it would be good to have the freedom to do, you know. Right. But I think, you know, the thinking is if we want to try to keep a school functioning in the village in, in Woodbury, 
then we may, you know, the lease to the new union district may not be the way to go. And, and you know, that's another decision we would have to make further down You're the road. You're talking about a magnet school or something like that? Or independent well, no, school? just to have this school be a functioning school with students within the new union district. If, if it requires, if they aren't going to go with a lease, then, and they want to go by the articles of agreement the way they're written now, then, you know, it would be kind of a leap of faith and trust for us to give it away for a dollar with the anticipation that if it ever gets closed, we'll get it back. That can be done with a lawyer, so. Yeah. But that's the big thing for you guys. If you want to keep kids in that school for the next two years, it looks like we've got to sell it back to the supervisor mm -hmm. union, either from the town or from you guys. From what we were told at the last yeah. school yeah. board meeting, that's my impression yes, from the last in two board. years, who knows, but at least that's two more years at least that Right. Mm -hmm. And they had well, mentioned right. also at that school board meeting, Brian, it might not be two years, it might be five years. Mm -hmm. That can That's a malleable thing also. Yeah, so if we did a no. sale thing, we, we're kind of guaranteed two, possibly five. Does that, the school yeah. still no, operate? We're not guaranteed two. Well, no? I don't think so. If the bill... We're guaranteed, you know, yeah. it said that they can't close the school. I mean, they in the articles of agreement, it says two years, but mm -hmm. there was suggestion that maybe those articles of agreement could say five years instead of two years. So there's a guarantee that the school would be functioning for however long of a time and then it would be up to the new <coughs> union district board to decide whether or not to close the school. Well, I'm, I'll just clarify or is there that. A vote, uh, is there a vote of all the towns that are involved? Under the default articles, if the property is conveyed, then the the school, let's take Woodbury specifically, Woodbury would operate for two years unless the voters of Woodbury um, voted to close the school. So it would operate for two mm -hmm. years. After that, um, unless the articles were, were, were amended otherwise, the school could only be closed by a majority vote of the entire electorate. Uh -huh. So not, not just the board. Not the board. Mm -hmm. okay. the, the, um, there was a proposal to give the authority to close the school after five years mm -hmm. to the board, mm -hmm. but that that was that was a preliminary discussion in one of the article uh, meeting of the articles mm -hmm. committee. Um, it's important to know that um, one of Lakeview's buildings that they use for uh, for the schooling is located in the town hall, mm -hmm. and that's. Um, we uh, we we heard at that meeting last Monday that there's a memorandum of understanding that that governs that mm -hmm. that between the town and the school district. The town and school district. Yep. Yeah. Um, so there's a proposal by by Lakeview to amend the language to include um, property that was operated and not conveyed. So it mm -hmm. would allow for um, a leasing, leasing the building to the mm -hmm. new union district. We have right. a, we so ha language proposed language to amend the articles of agreement. Correct. That's what you're talking about. Yes. Okay. So a that's a new, new proposal. Um, it was it was raised at a at a previous meeting, but it wasn't discussed at length. We have a meeting scheduled this Wednesday, so in two days, mm -hmm. and it's likely we'll discuss that proposal. Mm -hmm. So we'll. Um, We'll have more information likely at our school board meeting scheduled for Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. That is like the, to me the, uh, one of the big differences with uh, the Greensboro building is that the town still proposes to own and maintain the building and just let some of it be used. Right. For it's basically a, an old school in the town that, that has been used as. Um, the town office is down in the basement now. It used to be upstairs, and, and the upstairs rooms um, have become classrooms. There are four four rooms there, I think. If I remember, Grace, the program that I used to be a part of, we were able to use that space for many years as a community um, part of that. Um, and then upstairs is an old old gym with a stage, kind of like in Woodbury. Yeah. It's very similar, actually, now that I think of it, from the Woodbury School. And we, yeah. we need uh, no, no, I'm done. I'm yeah. Done. We also need to remember that even if even if um, proposed amendments are made and they're they're 
put in front of the voters, um, we, you know, we as a town, we don't know if they'll be voted up or down. Mm -hmm. So that it, it further complicates our decision making within the town, whether we're going to convey or not, because that that ultimate decision, if um, you know, if that language were proposed to allow leasing, we may not know that for a month, two months. So that, what, yeah. when, are, when, are, should those, when is it proposed that the articles of agreement with any changes that are made, when does that have to be decided or done by? There's, I, there's no, <coughs> there's as no far as I know, know, there's no date required. Okay. Does yeah. it have to be before July 1st? Ooh, I would think it would be. Yeah. Yeah. How I, could you start a new union district without... Well, I think it, bec it could become effective after July 1st. Yeah. Okay. Well, <coughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm not there's sure about that because there was the 90 days. There has to be warned and all that, doesn't it? And right. Wasn't That was the whole original timeline, and then it got delayed. We had our organizational meeting delayed. So I'm not actually sure. Mm -hmm. You you've been in more recent yeah. conversations directly with that I mean, committee, I, but another town like Lakeview or us, we don't really know how to proceed um, with the building, the property. Lakeview doesn't know either until something has been agreed upon officially. Yes. yes. Or someone tells us that they don't choose to enter into a lease with Lakeview. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think. You know, we should uh, let the public know what's going on. Yeah. I mean, we should try to have some kind of informal discussion at town meeting. I mean, that seems like the best time when most people are there to try to explain what's mm -hmm. happening, um, partly just with the, our, you know, the issue of the building, the property, and... We just signed the warning, too. Ah. Uh -huh. Well... I, We've tried well I, th I think the first item on the school warning is... Something. And things can be added to, to things can be added to the meeting. They just can't. You just can't vote on something. So we we could add it, sort of an informational. But if it's part of the school board, part. Well, it doesn't have to be. I mean, we've had community meetings. We put stuff out on right. on porch forum on Facebook, and I still have people saying, "What's going What's on? What's going on? Why can't we just what can we merge with Callis? I'm like, okay, that was oh, right. you know." We've had come a long way since then. People are still not sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can put that onto the agenda of town meeting informally, and it could be it's as much a town it's issue a discussion. as it is a school <coughs> district issue, and you know it's both. But if we own the buildings, and you know, and then there's the feeling from people, and I mean, we could do like a straw vote. How many people want to try to keep the school? open with kids in it you know I mean that would be a time we could just get could be like a survey or we could have a paper survey or we could just have a show of hands and that inform. couldn't even be a possibility though with it if you guys are joining that union or you just couldn't join the union to keep this to guarantee no, no, I'm not saying not to there. join the union I, I'm saying you know if we get an indication from people and you know town meeting would be a time when there would be a body of people from town there if people you know, if we just said, well, how many people want to see this school continue with kids in it? You'd probably get a ton of votes over there. It well, might not make yeah. it feasible. No, it won't make it feasible, but it would give us an indication. You know, if there's a question of if we, you know, have a lease and then we want to continue with the lease and the, and the, you know, the union district or the supervisor union is saying, you know, a lease isn't going to fly, mm -hmm. um, then we would know to go to go the other route if, if people in town indicate to us that they want to keep the school open with children. If, they, if nobody cares or they say we don't care, then um, we can just... Well, so please. ultimately the vote, the vote is about con conveying. conveying, and right. you're saying we should get a sense of would people vote to for for conveyance because right. of the would, would they be impact that would have on our you know of course the articles of agreement won't be figured out by then so we don't know you know we don't know what to tell people the consequences. I don't even know if you have a choice. Well, though. we do. We do. Our town has some degree of control over the final outcome of these default articles because some of these articles the 
the, these are some of the, the, I guess the most critical ones in the first two years regarding enrollment. Um, it's called restructuring, meaning the, uh, the uh, constitution of the classrooms in the building. Restructuring, enrollment, and closure of the buildings. Those default articles cannot be changed unless the voters of Woodbury vote to change them. So we do have some degree of control over the outcome, at least for two years. The voters of Woodbury do if we convey the property. If we convey the property to the new Union District, then we have rights under these articles mm -hmm. that, that may not change unless we vote to change them. Yeah. <clears throat> so there, I'm sorry, does I'm sorry. a require two-thirds majority or any other um, type of restrictions Do you mean to, to the vote? to change, yes. to amend the articles? Right. Uh, no, it's by majority, but some of the articles uh, may be amended again by by uh, an affirmative vote of each town, mm -hmm. right. effectively giving a veto to to any town in the district. Um, but the ones you're talking about are for the first two years specifically, mm -hmm. specific to our town. Mm -hmm. Right. The, so those so ones you were talking about for the first two years, if the buildings and land are conveyed. Correct. Correct. So, okay. Then our. Uh, so the majority votes. It's just the majority vote. Yeah, the majority vote in, in each town. So each right, right. yeah. I understand. Okay. But yeah. For, for Woodbury to convey the property, it would take a majority vote of the voters in Woodbury. In Woodbury right. to so convey we, that property. So we would have to uh, have hold a special town meeting in order to do that. Or a special meeting. Yeah, a special right. meeting. Yeah. But we could not, certainly not. start the ball rolling if the school board believes that it's necessary to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are, and, and we could yeah. get an indication of that from town meeting if we just yeah. have some type of informal discussion to handle. They could just oh, take will. the kids out of the school and make them all go to Hardwick, yeah. whether we close the school or open the school, whatever. Say, say if they want to be known. Could they just take all the kids and say, you're going to eighth, going to Hardwick Elementary? Not, not, not the first two years. Not the first no, two years. Not after if, that, they could? Oh. They could, yeah. Mm -hmm. After, well, after two years, if, if we were to convey the, pro we'll start from the, the core here, the default articles, and presuming that the, the property is conveyed. After, after two years, um, Article, uh, Article Three: The attendance, um, enrollment in the school. That I believe would then be subject to decisions of the district board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They don't um, guarantee and, either way. They could be kids here in school. They may consolidate in Harvard mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. After two years, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. There's there's a lot of uncertainty in this process. Yeah. There is, and it's made it's made, been made more uncertain by the um, the. Um, the pause that was that was placed yeah. in this process mm -hmm. due to the litigation. Yeah. Um, there's been a, a delay in the in the first organizational meeting. There's a lot of uncertainty under this. And they still haven't changed their final deadline date, have they, for mm -hmm. when this has got to happen? Yeah, but there's a lot of stuff being proposed in the oh, legislature right now. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, which leaves pushing it back for a year. Yeah. That that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I've, I've had that feeling all along to push it back. Really unfair. I saw it was totally unfair. Paper that, yeah. uh, there's another town, I think, at Barry actually, who um, we should cut that. On their I February meeting, Jacobo. they actually yeah. have a vote on. Uh, yeah amending some articles, but we didn't even get a chance to do that because everything is so rushed. Well, we have a chance to do it, but not in a very thoughtful, no, no. you know, it's kind of like with a gun to your head sort of thing. Let me see if I get John Yacovoni at our next board meeting. It would be great to have yeah, you know, both of them here. Just to and we can get us, I mean, I'm sure they have some sense, but maybe not. Our representatives I mean, are, are... bizarre. I mean, I just... Mm -hmm. They've all signed on to a letter asking for, you know, a bill asking for a one-year extension. Uh, 
That's what we, that would be great. And at the, at the meeting that I attended last Monday, Representative Chip Troiano was there, mm -hmm. and he stated that there's a bill either being considered or circulating in the legislature to delay mergers under Act 46 for one year. He said that's gaining traction. Mm -hmm. so. Forced by the state board. I'm sorry? The mergers forced by the state board. Yes, the involuntary mergers. Yeah. Yes. Because some schools did it voluntarily. Yes. Right. yes. Yeah. And some people are very happy with what's happened with the mergers. I mean, I heard some stuff on public radio, a couple of different people calling in on different school boards in other towns where you know, they, had, they weren't forced to merge at the last minute. Yeah. They had merged and, and you know, had positive things to say about it. So the, it's not that the, a merger is a bad thing. I think it's just making this decision you know, at the last minute and then forcing it upon people and giving them this totally unrealistic time frame to try to figure it. I mean, this is a very complex, complicated thing. I mean, yes. we've been dealing... Yes. The more we, you know, and to have to have it done within, you know, a couple of months or by July 1st, it just, it's totally unrealistic from, um, from at least it sure looks it. <laughs> and we had been, it had been recommended that our proposal be accepted. Right. So mm -hmm. that, it's not that's, like we that's were just part. being stubborn and toe-headed, right? I mean, we had this. Yeah. Initial, initial stamp of approval and then had been approved so. by, by the commissioner, um, the former commissioner. That's yes, part yeah. of the uh, part of the problem, I think, is that somebody else was there and had other ideas. Um, but, uh, yeah. All right. Well, the lease looks good. So we'll be short term. I'll be at the. Uh, Meeting on Thursday night. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I should have more information based on the meeting of the Articles Committee on mm -hmm. Wednesday. Okay. And I will I will get as much information as I can on the um, on the I guess the position of the, the different members regarding leasing the property. Mm -hmm. But I, I can tell you the impression I've gotten thus far is that it's not favorable. That was my impression from the high school board meeting. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I can't understand why that would make a difference, but whatever, I don't need to understand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe the feeling of fairness that we're not, they we're not you know, conveying our property like others are. They can't do anything with the property other than use it for educational purposes. Mm -hmm. Right. So, to me, what does it matter who owns it? Why do they have to have a piece of paper that say they, they own the property? It's just, to me, I, I don't get it either. I don't get it either. Unless there's issues with, you know, maintenance, blah, 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 um, with the uh, supervisor, you know, they, but if they can use it for other purposes, they being the newly formed district, like for offices or something like that, is that their end game? To use the structure for. They haven't said that, but. What's their gambit, if you want to call it that? Is it. You know, I mean, they definitely are going to want some flexibility, you know, in the long term. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if they, they. don't want to be pigeonholed into, you know, that's. And they, they were willing to extend it to five years, but they were saying ultimately things change over time. We don't know where we're going to be five years, ten years down the line. And. We need, you know, want to be able to have some flexibility. That's the whole point of this, right? Yeah. So. Which is the same. You know, we have it's nice because they did have a big influx of kids. That would make it easier. Because mm -hmm. they would probably take advantage of all the outlying schools more than they're yeah. likely to. Yeah. yeah. And I would encourage folks to look on HCTV, Hardwood Community Television. They they've recorded some of these special meetings. There was a. Um, meeting of the Hardwick Elementary School Board, I believe it was from January 14th, and they were discussing the merger. Um, so I think it would be helpful, mm -hmm. um, rather than just relying on uh, my account and accounts from other board members of what we've observed in the other members of the other districts. Um, I've seen one of those meetings. They're pretty unbiased. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. 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 They have, they have their own concerns, particularly in Hardwick, um, 
they're, they're very concerned about um, increases in the budget, year over year increases in percentage. Yeah. And I don't get the impression that anyone bears any ill will toward Woodbury or thinks that um, Woodbury is not a valuable school. They have their own interests within their town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they sometimes they don't mesh with ours. Yeah. They have a nice sign out front. Mm -hmm. That's all they knew. That's a good. Yeah, a lot of time it's just down to the numbers. You know, Hardwick's. Yeah. They're falling on their numbers. Our numbers are down. Greensboro, probably. It seems like there's not a lot of people having kids anymore. And yeah. So the numbers are slowly dwindling, and, and it makes sense financially to consolidate, but it's a lot tougher losing schools. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, there's other things you could do with the school building too that would, you know, keep it a vibrant, vibrant part of the community. You know, but if it if it does happen in two years, you know, I could see that becoming a community center. You know, it, it, you can do a lot of things with it, you know, especially the way it's equipped with an elevator and an emergency generator and a kitchen. You know, there's a lot of things you can do with it. Besides pickleball. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't get mothballed. But, no, yeah. it would not. It at, would not. You know, at these um, committee meetings, I've been trying to highlight the, the attributes at, mm -hmm. at our school. And we've got mm. woodlands, wetlands, we've got a, a rink, we've got a greenhouse, um, you know, we've got the ball fields, we've got a lot of um, volunt volunteer work that comes from the community. We've, um, you know, 2017 we had low, lowest spending in the district and, the, and some of the highest scores in the testing. Um, you know, so by a lot of objective measures, our, our school is very attractive yeah. and um, I'll speak personally for myself. My hope is that if we enter this <coughs> new union district that our school will be viewed as, as valuable uh, to, to other families, other students, as it is to our own. Uh, that we will attract more students, our school will grow. Um, they ever put out a questionnaire asking the residents that? At the schools, you know, if you had choice, uh, where would you go? I don't know the answer to that, actually. Yeah. Um, It'd be kind of nice to yeah, circulate through the so schools. and but You might find that that's the case. Yeah. Brian, that is um, part of merging their parents, families do have a choice. Yeah, but um, it might tell you now that you yeah, might get have the, the, the traffic yeah. flow. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah we want to, yeah, you may find that out. And well, the other piece <coughs> of it too is there's such a large homeschool population as well that is in the Hardwick, Woodbury, yeah. Greensboro area. So Could if they can see, them, yeah. yeah. How can you track them? Yeah. yeah. So if we did enter this, enter this new district with our school, it's possible that we could attract students, fill, the, fill the school to capacity, and then yeah. at the end of two years, there may be no movement to close the school right. because it's the because scenario. it's valued, yeah. Yeah. and that, it, yeah. that, it, that, it, that we could succeed on our merits. Mm -hmm. That there there may be, uh, <coughs> you know, there may be pr pressures coming from the budget, but the school may have a different value. Yeah, yeah, at the, the end of two years, yeah. start rising. It would be <clears throat> yeah. hard to close it. And it's, instead of instead of cutting within this district, we could work on growth, mm -hmm. attracting more students to all the schools, expand the tax base, expand the enrollment within the entire district. So you you know, that's the that's the ideal, that's yeah. the ideal outcome. Sure. So. Do you have a number on the number of homeschooled students that are? I don't know the number, sure. but I have heard that there are some significant, there's a significant population. We have a strong homeschool population in Woodbury, and then wasn't there a number presented about the Hardwick? Like, but it was unclear what the percentage was, but it was pretty, yes. pretty yeah, strong, so a pretty strong, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I just heard anecdotally, away. I don't yeah. know, I just heard recently anecdotally that yeah. Greensboro also has a large committed homeschool populations. Uh, I don't know. I don't really know nice much about it. would be a way to get them into the schools. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. We've had yeah. a, a couple of homeschool kids here that started attending part-time, and then we've had 
at least one I know that just came this year and is now very happy and full-time student. And so. So I, just to conclude, I think if, I think if Woodbury has a chance within this dis district, we could succeed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. it's tell them we're bringing high-speed internet. <laughs> <laughs> In about eight years, <laughs> to us, Woodbury. <laughs> and slow-growing garlic, which is now for sale at the uh, in the office. Yes. <laughs> no, no. We have yeah. a great presentation. Yeah. On a gentleman whose oh. corporation is bringing or plans to bring fiber optic to your home, yeah. fiber optic cables. Fiber that was earlier tonight. Earlier yeah. tonight, yeah. Yes. Very sharp person. Yeah. That was pretty impressive. Sounds exciting. We'll see. Yeah. Mm. Plus, our school is on the National Register of Historic Buildings. Yes. yes. And yes. So, no one can really touch them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They really can. And that's on the website, too. All the documentation, if you're interested. Mm -hmm. www.woodbury. <laughs> you got to plug the website every 15 minutes or so. <laughs> <laughs> the, the original handwriting from 100 plus years ago. This summer you'll see a oh, plane no, that, flying that over with our website address on it. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you guys for all your time on all sure. of these issues. Well, thank you guys for your work. Yeah. This hasn't been easy, I'm no, sure. No, this is, yeah. 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 We appreciate the cooperation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's continue yeah. this. Uh -huh. so get through it together. Can, um, finalize this, right? Get the best outcome. Yeah. I don't see why not. Yeah. It's, you know, our our attorney has blessed it. So, okay. yeah. Yeah. so I know it. I think I looked at your agenda, and one of your agenda items is to discuss whether or not you guys should hire an attorney mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that'll be up for you guys to decide mm -hmm. to do that or not. And I know Patrick mentioned sharing this lease with the supervisor union. I think he already he did. has. He's done yeah. it already? Okay, so good. I'm we'll okay, we'll hear we'll about that too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Michael, this is for you. Certificate of Highway Miles. Oh, okay. But before we do that, uh, it's 833. Anything more to discuss tonight? You, you have appointments on the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> appointments. That's right. We could, we could, we don't have to do this tonight. No, that's Okay, so what you're going to do is I'm going to change something. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Not, not, not doing what? what? Appointments. No, that's what we're doing. Oh, okay. I yeah. thought you said. No. I just had. Just appointments in general. Do we know who is not going to, who is choosing not to be appointed, like to the uh, planning commission? Well, um, Peter Peltz has right. resigned. Brian would like to get off, it's so hard to resign. Town, town meeting, town I'm meeting, he's done. For a number. <laughs> um, you have expressed an interest in joining, so Avail is going to hang in there. So there will be four of us. Technically, as a select board member, I'm an ex officio member of the planning commission, so I wouldn't be able to vote, but we have three people that could vote, so that's a cool one. Um, so, and then we can try to... So I know we sent out letters to appointees. Yeah, to everybody. Yeah, but I don't think the appointments ever got done. Which is kind of no, they did. I couldn't find them anywhere in the minutes. So, and I couldn't find any. Usually, I have a file in the file cabinet as appointments for 2007 and 2016 and. I just couldn't find uh, Don't you usually either call people or send them a letter? I usually saying, just call people and see if they wanted to get uh, reappointed. Yep. And uh, last year, Skip decided to write to everybody. And we did that the year before. <laughs> we did too. Yeah, yeah we, we did. We've done it for two years. <coughs> and then, well, we tried, well, we were trying to do Brian, and I, I don't think we did this when you were on the suck board previously. Um, we we're trying to get a sense. You know, rather than start to figure this out after town meeting, when so that those appointments stay on 
fill for a stretch of time, try to have it figured out before town meeting so yeah. that immediately after town meeting we know who wants to stay on, who doesn't, mm -hmm. um, and so we can make those appointments immediately after town meeting. Yeah. So we should send the letters out. So the, um, Unless you want to call everybody. No, yeah. I, there aren't that many. I mean, there was a, one, uh, a couple of uh, board of adjustments. Rick Cannon already said he would be reappointed. I did not Can ask a, Mike McGlynn. Can I get a town report just so we have a... <coughs> an idea of what the appointments are. Right. Well, yeah. I've got a list of what's going to go in this year's town report. Good. Okay. Yeah. Cool. There, there are a bunch of town reports up here. I could go out and get one. Yeah. You're actually going to grab a list anyway. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Oh, look at that. He did have it down there in his satchel. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't want to come out of the satchel. Right? <laughs> For the year 2017, Here's the appointed officials. We've got Greg Parker, Kim Zilk, Kim Zilk. Can Brian you say Chetty. what they're for? Brian Chatney, health no. officer. Health officer. No, 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 to Brian Chatney. What? Health officer. No, really? Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. So Ooh, that's somebody. Who's going to do that? Well, that's what we have to figure out. Yeah, somebody, yeah. maybe somebody will volunteer for that one. Mm -hmm. Forest fire warden assistant fire. No, that's, that's state. Those are appointed by the state. <clears throat> Planning commission you've already discussed. Yep. Zoning There's administrator. Yep. Board of adjustment. Rick Cannon and Mike Woodland both expired in 2018. Conservation one. commission, I think we... We're, there, we're, yeah, that's pretty much figured out. Yeah. Regional planning commission. I'm, yes, I'm still the rep. Um, oh, and and Solid Waste uh, District, I think probably Jane is doing it. We'll get a letter from them asking for it. Mm -hmm. Energy coordinator. Yeah, for whatever. <laughs> Assistant <laughs> town clerk and treasurer, you guys don't appoint them. Right. We appoint them. The emergency management director. No! Retired from Oh, Island man! Field. Take my name off the list. Oh, my God. <laughs> I have been to one training for that, um, and there is another full day training, but um, I, really, I really don't want to do it either. But Maybe somebody from the fire department. Yeah. That's what I, I had. Uh, uh, um, I had asked, actually had asked Paul Cerruti that um, mm -hmm. question, and he did give me a couple names, but. Um, oh, good. E911. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tree Warden Ronald Wells, mm -hmm. Pound Keeper Kim Silk. Are we that sure really that is. Kim wants to keep on with all of those well, things? Well, I would ask him. Okay. So there's one to ask. He's also the dangerous buildings officer. Right. Yeah. Maybe he could become the health officer. <laughs> he might be. You person. never know. He might yeah. sign He's, up for it. Yeah. There Maybe actually is stuff that has to be done with the health officer. Oh. Uh, you ought to see the book. <coughs> yeah, really. It is insane yeah. what they yeah. want. Yeah. Yeah. The new rules are so mm -hmm. crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's the problem. Yeah. Is there any health practitioners in town? Like You've almost got to be a building nurses. inspector, mm -hmm. electrician, plumber. Because mm -hmm. when, when you go into a house to inspect it, somebody complains, you're supposed to look at everything, whether so. it's a light or a switch or a plug-in or mm. you know gfis and they want mm. this list yeah. you know four pages long that you check off to go into this and yeah. see larger towns it's probably a paid position it's it's probably a paid exactly. position. Right. And they're probably going to turn it into that here if you're going to have to do it right right mm. because it's going to take somebody several mm. hours to probably go in and do this the way the state wants. Sounds like somebody who's a building contractor more a than a contractor, mm -hmm. electrician, a certified building inspector, maybe. Right. Mm -hmm. Maybe but it yeah. could be one for half a dozen towns or something. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it'd be nice if you could share them <coughs> with somebody, some other town. I don't know if that's possible or not. But yeah, when I was reading mm -hmm. the last updated on that manual, it was like you know, I think that no is a, I think that is a possibility. There are towns that share other appointed. Officials, as long as it doesn't say in state statute that it has to be a resident of the town. Uh, zoning administrator, that can be a shared position with other towns. 
I think I've heard I heard that when we were really no well, yeah. somebody wants to do it you know, you're not required Maybe to be a resident of the town yeah I think, I think <laughs> I don't think you know some of these appointments that it, you know some of them like a select board member you have to be a resident right. of town right. and yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, yeah, mm -hmm. I guess yeah. that Even when, when we have ex extended oh, yeah. requests on zoning administrator Callus, and everything. When we were, okay. when we had appointed Bob Martin, somebody from Callis, I think it might have been Denise, the select board chair. Wheeler. Wheeler. Wheeler contacted me wondering if, yeah, because she called Bob Martin. She was wondering yeah. if he would want to be the zoning administrator in Callis okay. also. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Wow. Yeah. It might be easier if you did it in the town you didn't live in. <laughs> <laughs> he, I mean, uh, yeah, she sent sure. me an email and I said, well, you know, I can't answer that. I'll, I'll pass it on to Bob. And <laughs> did he take the... I don't know if he did or not. We'll have to ask him. Yeah, yeah. we have definitely come into an age of regulation, though. And oh, yeah. you, have to, you have to learn every The town's. old school stuff is stuff. Yeah. I mean, that, that, one, that one emergency management director thing I went to, it was a, like a two hour thing and it just, you know, it just felt like it was all kind of stuff that was set up that was not really relative to our small town. Right. And, and, um, it's set up for a full time position at some of these big towns right. that these guys yeah. can do all this stuff. And a lot of it's just stuff on paper. I mean, but, you know, part of it is, you know, if there ever was an emergency, you know, like for say for FEMA or something, the whole reason for the mm -hmm. local emergency operation plan, which has a new name now, is that there's protocol for reporting, which if you don't follow the protocol, then you don't get the oh, reimbursement yeah. from FEMA. In, so our, in our application <clears throat> for FEMA funding, I dug out a letter that Brian had written by hand during one of the, right mm -hmm. after one of the flooding events, and that yep. was good to have. It was uh, yep. part of our evidence. Oh, yeah. so. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, anyway, all right. Anyway. Woodbury Fund Committee. I'll just ask Peter if he wants to reappoint all the so Peter, Grady, yeah. Robin, and I think I should put John Meyer on here. Yep. Um, Woodbury Harvest Rail Trail. You going to quit that too? No. I just okay. Pick out that one. Okay. Who else is on it with me? Steve Gray, Jim Smith, Peggy Bowen, Harry Daly. Because that probably might be one of. The only members on it. Then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Steve yeah, Gray. What did, yeah, Steve right? Gray. Yeah. Jim Smith. Jim Smith. Peggy Bowen. Mary Daly. Mary. Yeah. We haven't done anything on the trail for a while. I did talk to Hale and said we were going to do some stuff this summer. Mm -hmm. Mary Daly. Is there five? Yeah, you. I'd leave myself off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll get a hold of these guys and find out. Harry might retire. Peggy might retire. Mm -hmm. Steve, I find out if he's still alive. Haven't seen his he came in. He, he came. <laughs> no, I think he came in about the the snowmobile trail, didn't he? Probably, uh, yeah. Last, uh, yeah. Usually before winter comes, yeah, they come. Yeah, they never came yeah. before the select board. They, they didn't. Come didn't. No, no. no, boy, the years fly by. It's the first <laughs> it year. It seems like it was just your last month. First year that they have it. Yeah, I haven't oh, never heard anything from them. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, usually a couple guys. It's pretty much the same agreement each stuff. year. Yeah, that's so, true. Mm -hmm. But but usually, it, you know, usually they they're do usually come. pretty serious about it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. They didn't. They didn't. Yeah, it's the same thing. thing. Now it's an older group of people that are doing mm -hmm. all the work, and mm -hmm. the young people mm -hmm. are getting into it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. Health officer and emergency management director. Right. Big holes coming up. Yep. Mm. Uh, you'll have people just dying to get into those spots. Okay, then good. <laughs> have to be a health <laughs> uh, maybe we should start paying them too, like we do with a dangerous building officer and the animal I control I think in the end you may end up having to, yeah. to do that because mm -hmm. it's, you know, the last trailer inspection I did was fairly quick, but still it'll burn up an hour to an hour and a half on mm -hmm. you. And then if you have to record, you have to call the state and check with things. And yeah, just a long paper and, and, you know. 
Yeah, the last one I just wrote a letter to for her to get some money from <coughs> somebody so they would help her move into some yeah, So the dangerous buildings person gets fifteen dollars an hour. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bar Gordon. Yeah, twelve fifty. Oh, we we upped it to fifteen or whatever. Oh yeah, we did. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just looking. Some right. appointed positions. Yeah, fifteen dollars seems to be pretty average for yeah. just a. Yeah, some get time. something and Although some don't. The fire wardens get a lot. <laughs> how did that? How did the original folks who decided who gets paid and who doesn't get paid? I have no idea. Decided it was before all our time. Yeah. yeah, no yeah. Idea. We eliminated some a year or two ago. Um, you know the yes, surveyor of fences and of the wearer of coal. Yeah, yeah. yeah those never took those out. Yeah. It just yeah. seems so kind of kind of antiquated. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. of coal. Right. When yeah. Steve was on and we were doing those, he was pretty interested in how they came about. Paul um, Paul Gillis, there's a book that Paul Gillis has written um, about different state um, laws or whatever, um, and he has a section on the fence, sir, uh, fence viewers, viewing. fence viewers. I've done the fence viewing before here. Yeah, yeah. We had to go and out. how that came about. That was basically, you know, if your bull gets out and breeds somebody else's cow, then you call the fence viewer and he comes and looks at the fence and whoever is was irresponsible in keeping up their fence, then that's their problem. They have to recompense for that. So that's mm -hmm. how the original fence yeah. viewers, you know, if then it turned into a probably boundary, boundary markers because that's what we had to go out. Yeah, really. Was a boundary that's, that's, uh, yeah. Yeah. You didn't run into a bull, did you? Didn't run into no bulls out there, thank God. <laughs> yeah, the book, I haven't, I've read parts of Paul, I have it, I have a copy of it. But I read, there's a thing about trees in there. Yeah. Um, but I read, I haven't read it all yet, but it's, it's you know, because he's sort of a historian, historian, <laughs> historian, historian of state yeah, statues, especially yeah, the odd ones. A lot of knowledge. He, he does, yeah. 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 He likes to talk about it. Yeah. He was in his element here when he was doing the title search. For oh, my goodness, yeah. he knew right yeah. where to look. Oh, and yeah. He found some books that I I had never even touched. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that is his element. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The old ancient roads thing, you know, he, mm -hmm. would, all, he mm -hmm. was a chapter about that. And, and the law of trees. The law of yeah, trees, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, do you have a sense of you? You're willing to. I don't to think there's going to be a lot. I'm not going to write letters. I'll make a few phone okay. calls. If you want to write letters, you can get your uh, secretary here to do it. <laughs> but there, there aren't a lot. I mean, what, I'll what, call Kim. What the select board needs is a list of appointments that are open to try mm -hmm. to that we can yeah. advertise at town meeting, sure. partly. Or put on our website. Yeah. Mm. And then confirmations of people that are going to stay on so that we can reappoint them if their term is up mm. um, after town meeting. That's, that's what we need. Mm -hmm. That's why we started doing yeah. what we did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I, Laura's taking copious notes, so we'll, <laughs> we'll know what positions need yeah. to be filled and mm -hmm. we can put them on front porch forum, yeah. Woodbury mm -hmm. Connections, mm -hmm. and Website. Mm -hmm. yep. Perfect. And maybe do a shout out at town meeting too or something. Health officer and emergency management director. Right. The health officer and they had really got nothing to do with health as far as that goes. It's all about the buildings. And the sewage. And sewage. If you get a, if somebody smells reports a sewage smell, it's the health officer's duty. To go there and smell and, uh, it. Yeah, and smell it. There was yeah. a sniff test. Yeah. Step in it. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. You can, oh, yeah, that is bad. Nice vintage. Yeah. You can curse it. I don't know. Did Adams. you ever have to? Uh, <laughs> right. You know, I had to. So which one where you had to require them to move or? No, I never got, got, in, system never got into one. Oh, but I walk up the hill from meetings here. I you know would smell sewage. Oh. Oh. Um, as it right at the bottom of the road here, but I never knew. I like never right reported across it. the road. Or yeah, I never. I never knew who. Do you want to give her one more report? Before yeah, right. He's got a few. He's got a little while. Well, I haven't smelled it recently, but it's warm. <laughs> summertime. Let me get my letter. I got my letter right there, written oh, already really? to resign. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we have a yeah. Yep. Yeah, for appointees.
Cool. All right. So it's now 8.50. And that's enough. Mm. Somebody want to make a motion? I was going to introduce a motion <laughs> if there no objections that for discussion. Uh, make a motion that we yeah. end our January 28th, 2019 select board meeting, adjourn the meeting at 8.50. Second. Third. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye.